Heavily processed foods has been connected to poor health and obesity. If that wasn't enough to get you to stop eating them, well, listen to this. We now have a meta-analysis showing that also leads to mental health outcomes that aren't so great. In other words, eating heavily processed foods can also make you feel depressed and anxious. Looks like these foods don't have a ton of value besides the fact that they just taste really good and they're convenient. So you probably want to avoid them. How, how do they prove that? Is that um, people reporting back that they feel depressed? Like, how are you measuring that? I think that's what they're doing. I think they're looking at... Well, you know, that seems so, that let seems me pull yeah, up the study the for you. I mean, that just seems so... so it is a meta-analysis, so that makes it... More, cross there's, there's cross, more cross studies, right? Yeah. Of course, in order to come up with this conclusion, and look at, yes, and see if like, and I know if that's it, the most accurate. But I mean, it just that sounds so yeah, arbitrary, the, right? Like you have this uh, yeah. people that eat processed foods and they, a Snicker bar, and you're just like, mm. well, so it has nothing to do with my wife and I got in a fight last night. It was more to yeah. do with the the Cheerios that I had. Well, here's here's what the conclusion of this meta analysis said. It says greater exposure to ultra processed food was associated with a higher risk of adverse health outcomes, especially cardiometabolic, common mental disorder, and mortality outcomes. These findings provide a rationale to develop the evaluation of effectiveness of using population-based and public health measures to target and reduce dietary exposure to ultra-processed foods for improved human health. So through these meta-analysis, they were able to deduce with, I mean, more certainty than we have, although I would argue that this is probably the case, that it's not it, 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 it's cause and effect, not the other way around. In other words, one of the arguments may be, well, wouldn't people who are depressed and anxious reach for these foods more often? Right. How do you how do you parse that out? Well, that's how they that's what they looked at with the meta analysis, and so they say, okay, it's probably yes. If you're more depressed and anxious, you're more likely to reach for these foods. But these foods also tend to cause uh, those effects in people. Mm. Now that makes sense to me because <clears throat> we know conclusively that ultra processed foods make people overeat, overeating. Uh, you know, obviously you start to gain body fat, that you get blood sugar issues that aren't so great. That is going to make you feel bad as you, well. You know what? What two things make me reach for processed foods the most? Poor sleep and inactivity. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Those two things will, will promote me wanting to grab processed food, junk food, however you want to categorize it, more than anything else. Anything else that I've ever paid attention to or tracked, which I've tracked a lot of this stuff. I notice that if I get a poor night's sleep, the cravings are like crazy. I notice that if I have a sedentary day, don't get up, don't exercise, don't train or what that kind of lounge around. Boy, do I want <clears throat> something fast junk food like food. Yeah, is that a mechanism of of like we're seeking high calorie dense foods or is it just comfort? The, comfort. It's yeah, got to be comfort because it would be the opposite, right? The, the opposite would be true. But you would think that if I went trained that I would want calorie dense food. Yeah. I would want all those calories. I need those calories because I just depleted myself, which makes more biological we've, sense. We've turned foods but, into drugs. That's what it yeah, is. So drug. food- It's more of a drug response. Yes. hundred percent. Yes. We have turned food. So what, what, what scientists have done with ultra processed foods, if they, they've, I mean, they've really, people don't realize this, the, the money and effort that has gone into the food science is remarkable. When you start to go down the rabbit hole, um, your mind continuously gets blown at just how, how much money, time and effort they've, they have spent on really figuring this out, how to get these foods to trigger mechanisms in your body, to make them so, um, irresistible that they've literally turned foods into drugs in terms of how your body reacts. So you're not reaching for them for nutrients. No. Your body and brain is reaching them for drug-like effects. Or else Justin's effects. point would make That's more right. sense. It would make more sense that after a hard workout that I would reach for a, you know, 1,500-calorie fast food lunch so, or whatever. to put it differently, right, in, in nature, to find palatability would require some sort of effort, right? So you want a high, a, a nutrient-dense food like meat. In nature, well, you got to go chase the animal down. Yeah, it's you got to kill it. Involved, yeah. yeah, you got to kill it, and then, and then you and then you get your meat. You want to find something sweet, fruit, and for most of human history, was pretty hard to come by. Didn't look like the fruit that we've uh, that we have now. Like apples were very little flesh, big seeds. Same thing with bananas and other fruits that we've kind of modified. Honey, you had to go through bees to get honey, and so that was considered. I mean, honey, you know, for, for most cultures for a long time was like very, very. I don't know, expensive kind of luxurious yeah, type food. Desirable, yeah. Now you can you can find foods that hit those and then some in the brain, and it requires no effort at all. It's no different than um, what pornography's done to our brains when it comes to sex. Sure. And for most of human history, 
you want to have sex with somebody who's very attractive, there's some hoops you got to go through and you really need to pass a lot of tests and be worthy of that, whatever. Now you could just, you know, now, the now because of that, I feel like I, ch I've changed over time. My recommendation to a, a, a client or a potential client when it comes to getting in shape and, and like what steps would I take first? I think in the past, I would have leaned heavy on the diet because we know how much diet is. Yeah. I would tell somebody like, you know, oh, cut these foods out or add these foods. And, you know, just that alone is already going to change the body more because we know how what big percentage food is. But knowing what a uh, how much more a challenge it is to eat good foods because you don't move or aren't exercising makes me reverse how I would probably recommend. Like, I think now I think like, do things like, to make you feel good. Yeah. yeah like, let me like like especially like when I think back to like my, even my own habits of exercise, like I really think now, which I don't think I've ever recommended this to a client. Like obviously I've been done training clients for a long time now. And if I go back again, I think I would recommend a very similar to a maps 15 type of protocol to clients before they did any they daily activity. Yeah. Yes. Like literally just a little momentum builders. Yeah. Like yeah. just 15 minutes. Gosh. Every day. I know, you're and right. I'm, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, right. 100%. And, I, and, I, and I would and I would literally just and what I tell them nutritionally, just track for me. Because mm -hmm. one, I already know tracking will make yeah. them self-regulate by 15%. Just a little bit less of less mm -hmm. right? Seek your protein so I'm like, out. Eat. All I want you to do mm -hmm. to these two exercises every day. That's it. Track what you're doing. Report back to me. Then as a coach and trainer, I I assess it and I go, I don't look to take away. I look where can I add top areas, protein, yeah. fiber healthy fats, right? And I, and I just start giving them little bits of yeah, like- because low enough dose, it, it's going to build up a lot of that like good feeling. Yeah. And you're not going to get a lot of the detriment of like, oh, I overdid it or I, you know, now I got to recover and I'm sore and whatever. And, and I recognize the behaviors that are attached yeah. to the movement again. Like I was saying earlier that I recognize that when I don't work out, I tend to crave those foods. Just when I train, it doesn't have to be a hard session at all or a great session. Just, just because I lifted that day, I automatically want to make better food choices. It's not like I'm telling myself I need to because I-, I Well, the data shows like, up. Like, yeah, I want to. I like- I, I in a better state. Yeah, we had, we had two two days this weekend. One weekend, one day we trained, one day we didn't. And the day that, and this is where this, con this is coming up for me, is like, I could feel the difference between the two on the day that- we worked out together. I looked at Katrina. I'm like, no, I, no. And we, and we were ordering out, right? That was where we were at. Like we, we didn't have anything prepared for the day. Her and I were like, oh, let's, let's order, let's order in. And as we're going through DoorDash, looking at the things, I'm like, I don't want any of those things like that, that we're going through because I want, so, I wanted something healthy. My body was craving that it's it, versus the day before when I hadn't trained and we had ordered. By the way, I want to I want to add a little caveat. You train pro appropriately. I think a terrible a workout That's where you fair. beat the shit out of yourself. Yeah, where you cortisol gonna, cortisol spikes like you'll crazy. be seeking comfort yeah, yeah, from food. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You know what this reminds sure. me of? Uh, God, man, you guys ever think back to arguments you had that you thought you were so right, and then years later you look back, and go, oh, they were right all the time. <laughs> Whoops. I had an instructor that used to teach. Um, uh, meditation classes. Uh, at one point I had a small studio in addition to the wellness studio where we did group classes. And this was a meditation expert. And they made a comment to me that I couldn't let pass. So we were talking about the benefits of meditation and they were paying me. I mean, I was hiring them to teach them. I saw, so you know, I was interested in learning and I, I took some meditation classes from them, but by no means did I have a lot of experience. And they were talking about all the benefits and the values. And I said, you know, what's weird about meditation. What's cool is that your clients that you train, Sal, you don't even have to talk to them about diet. If they just meditate, they'll eat better. And I remember I was like, I can't let that slide. So I'm like, no, it's, that's not, it doesn't work that way. So we got in this big old debate. Too woo -woo yeah, we yeah. got in this big old debate. Well, they they actually showed me a study. They actually showed me several studies where when people meditated daily, they actually ate healthier. Oh, interesting. And I remember I still went against it and I argued it and this and that and whatever. Well, but I think that they made a really good point. And that is when you are, when you're able to like through meditation or whatever practice, you start to feel better in your body. You start to feel more um, present. You don't feel like you have to distract yourself or whatever. You're probably less likely to reach for food as a way to comfort yeah. yourself. And, well, the, and the, again, studies would show this. Isn't this parallel to what we're finding with those Zempic in these like GLPs <sighs> because of the lowering of brain inflammation? Yeah. And That's just, what they think, right? That's what they speculate. But I mean, it just makes sense. Even with like feeling better with the body, uh, yeah. you know, meditating. So you're reducing stress. So you can actually make, conscious decisions that benefit you, you know, all that matters. Like you're just going to do a lot better if you bring yourself into that state.
Today's giveaway is Maps Performance. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we uh, post it. Also, uh, subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. This month's sale is as follows. Maps Anabolic, half off. Maps Anabolic Advanced, also half off. Two very popular programs, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Perfect transition to me getting to this beef I have with Sal, Justin. Oh, oh, this so, will be good. Did you know that? Did you know that? Beef. Yeah. It happened. It's not I got beef. beef with you. You got son. some beef. No, yeah, beef. I sent a, I sent a text that uh, I I don't think I don't even know if Justin even pay attention to the our mind pump one on one weekends or whatever like that. Oh uh, yeah, I, I read it, but then I don't uh, respond. Yeah, yeah. I let you guys squabble yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> because I was saying that, hey, we should we should buy more Weight Watchers uh, oh, because yeah. the news that just came out uh, with Oprah, Oprah has stepped away. She's donating her shares, but that was given away, like I think I want to say like $1.8 million worth of her shares. No, that, billion. Oh, bill is no, no, no. Like no, sold no, no, her no, whole, not a, not a billion. Her whole stock in that. Yeah, her. She has shares. She had shares yeah. in the in the in See the company. See how much it was. Maybe now, there's controversy it. around this, right? So she's she has came out publicly uh, in the last year and shared that part of her huge success in weight loss had to do with. Uh, she didn't say what what drug she was taking, but she was taking a a, a drug or a pharmaceutical or or something. Yeah. Mm. And so there's a lot of speculation that it was you know Ozempic. Yeah, it was basically Ozempic or the other uh, name brands or whatever like that. Uh -huh. And so she's decided to step away and to stay away from the controversy on she was doing it to exit, make money, mm. and all this stuff like that. She just donated her shares, which is a smart play on her her part. Now I made the case that listen, mm. I already thought Weight Watchers was a good buy at four dollars. It's now it plummeted. Because of her announcing, you the biggest spokesperson for Weight Watchers in the last. Yeah, so it's a, a good hit from that. Yeah, so they took a twenty percent hit or what? That shares dropped down. It basically dropped down to three dollars share. I said to do that. Sal said didn't mm -hmm. want to do that and thinks that Weight Watchers is going to go under over that. Now I made the case that not over her. I think that yes. all these diet companies because I'm looking at what these GLP ones are doing. Well, and I'm going to okay. tell you right now, if you're a company. And your, your sole job is giving people diets and helping them with their diets. And here's your diet food. Here's your whatever. Like Weight Watchers does and other companies. I think these GLP-1s are going to put them out of business. I do. I already know people on GLP-1s. So and your I'm talking argument is this is going to put them out of business. Our, Adam's argument is that... They're going to incorporate it. They are incorporating, right? They are incorporating. Right. And but Adam's Adam's argument is this company's been around for sixty years, and I'm okay. going to bet on a company that's been successful oh. for sixty years that because the market winds change, that they adapt. And just like okay. I would hope we would, this is if all of a sudden, but this is truly a market shattering yeah. um, technology. This is not like anything we've ever seen. Well, market. Ever. So, is there any numbers of people that are seeking the drug itself without? any kind of like coaching along with it uh, most most vast majority of people are just taking a glp1 yeah i don't think so i don't i don't think by any means that um, like what's the value of weight watchers because they was a social component and you're working with other yeah, people and they're helping you but you know that but you know how powerful that is crossfit's example yeah. shitty workouts look at all people doing it still no no no. Mm, imagine social it, component no, no. imagine if there was well, a peptide the that made you love with... that would be this that's not the right comparison it would be like a peptide that made you want to work out so imagine if they gave you a peptide like man i really want to work out i enjoy it I'm not going to cry. I don't give a shit about CrossFit. I'm going to go mm -hmm. do my own thing now. Yeah. I, you know, hmm. as, as, as much as we're, they're, they're screwed. I think that they know they're screwed. I don't think that's it's, why they're jumping. I don't on. think it's that revolutionary. I don't oh. think it's, I mean, I think in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the world of drugs, peptides, pharmaceuticals, weight loss, things that have been invented, it is the most breakthrough thing we've ever seen. There's no, but they're not even the there's same too universe. much. There's too. Yeah. Okay. Fair. I, I agree with that, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Or else, or else we would see obesity already on the decline. Uh, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Hold on a second. To your to your point, no. if it's going to put away, put out all the all the companies that have any sort of tie to diets because this drug comes out, I think it's then gonna, you would see a movement in in the obesity. It's market. already starting to happen. It's it, it's just started to um, the market is really now starting to explode. I do. I think it's going to solve obesity or health issues. No, but. If your market, if your Weight Watchers and your market is people who like really need help and support so they don't overeat and I need real help doing this. And then they, there's this peptide that comes out that people take and it's not a stimulant. It's not going to do anything, you know, like, like the prior medications. Yeah. They just take it and it's like, wow, I'm not really thinking about food like I used to. I don't even want to drink as much alcohol. Like, uh, you know, I don't like bad habits. I kind of feel like hmm. doing them less. 
like that. Why, why would they, my point is what kind of coach do they use? Now I can see personal trainers and coaches and fitness coaches and, you know, people interested in like building muscle because mm -hmm. obviously just eating less isn't going to do it. You're going to lose muscle and fat. You also have to eat the high protein. Yeah, I you think have to there's a lot muscle. of opportunity in that for sure. Potential. Yeah. I mean, but, do you, do you believe that coaches and trainers are also going to no, exist? No, oh, you I think don't. coaches and trainers are going away? I uh, know. I think, think, no, I think they're going to do fine. Oh, okay. Because so the it, exercise component. Okay. And so, because, okay. So here's the thing too. This is the, like just how I would think, because it, it would be so naive if somebody looked at our business, okay, and we're nothing compared to Weight Watchers. Sure. If someone looked at our business and because podcasting is going to go away completely or because digital programs are never going to get bought online, right. that we would disappear. Huh, I have a little more faith yeah. in us and our ability have to you adapt. Did, did, I, now and, I sent, you their, and I sent you their revenue, right? Yeah, no, they're, they've been on a downcline. They've been on a, on a decline for almost a decade. So mm -hmm. that that's your bet. That's your best argument is that the company's been on a, a you know profitability yeah. wise and, and gross wise. And I but I think that the Ozempic sales are what's going to take them out of that, bro. Oh, At the very least, it's going to give them their best year coming. Why up. would they? Why would somebody pay Weight Watchers to get semaglutide when they can go get the peptide by itself? Because they're already it in the they're already in the network, dude. You, how many leads do you think they have over sixty years of collecting people's emails? So they'll, so so Weight they'll Watchers market to people. Uh, you know, how many people do you think? So they're going to start how providing the peptides? How, they are. Oh, they're connected to yeah. it. But what I mean is, so that's all they're going to do? They're going to pivot in that direction? I, I'm not saying that's the only thing they're going to do, but imagine that mm -hmm. they, okay, there is a whole bunch of people that- That's a good question because I don't know how they're working with these- yeah. with some. Of oh, the they're guys. directly partnered. They're making money. They're making money off of get, that. Getting people to go to like a physician that, that actually like prescribes uh, is a whole nother step on its own. Uh, with instead of just going into like what you were already like your network you're already so, going to meetings. what do you what do you think 60 years okay you know how many emails we have you know how small we are how big do you think their internal networks and then how many people do you think we introduce semi-glutide to would you not agree that probably 80 percent of the people that listen to our show heard about semi-glutide from us first. Yeah. So what makes you think that that isn't the same thing that happened in Weight Watchers, that this is their trusted source of infor information related to nutrition, otherwise they it's wouldn't- a, It's a very interesting market. When I look at it, I, it rem it's the most disruptive thing we've ever seen, that, we're ever gonna, that we've ever seen, um, I'm, I'll bet money on that, mm. in this space. Okay, yeah. there's oh, nothing- yeah, uh, uh, Agreed, like, agreed, agreed. Sure. Agreed, agreed, agreed. So and I, I also think that that is, uh, Weight Watchers has been on this downward turn. They saw the writing on the wall and they partnered up with a peptide company. Mm. Or that That's the move. Is that how they are? They're, pep, they're, they're partnered they're with They're partnered with Ozempic. So you go to them and then Weight Watchers has you talk with a doctor. I mean- And then they provide it to you? How does that work? What this is how it works right here. Weight Watchers has faced more competition recently from GLP-1 prescription drugs like Ozempic Wegovy, sometimes used for weight loss. In response, it launched a new membership plan for people on those drugs that gives members access to doctors who can prescribe these medications. Okay, so uh, last year we also made a $100 million plus deal to buy Sequence a telehealth business that offers vir virtual prescriptions. So they, they okay. have a tel they have a yeah, telehealth, the telehealth business, business too. So they're gonna. gonna so they're they're very they're pivoting big time. Yes. Yeah. You know what's crazy about this? Can I just say this? What's crazy? Because I should have bought that. yesterday, Doug. No. <laughs> you should still, see what they're at right you're now. You're still okay. They're three twenty. I bought more today. Yeah. You know what's crazy about this? <clears throat> By the way, all your picks have have, have tanked. What well, your portfolio? <laughs> your portfolio <laughs> is oh. mine. Hey, hold on. HubSpot is your you biggest. Didn't buy it though. It doesn't matter yeah. that I didn't buy it. I, I buy all the ones you. Adam mentions. You're, and he doesn't yes, buy. yes. <laughs> That's my <laughs> biggest blunder. Was I said to do it I and I didn't do it. You did it. You did it. It is literally your portfolio right now. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Oh, Listen. God, dude. Anyway. How dare Who you? Who is it that first said the earth was round, but then Columbus came over? You get <laughs> no, so uh, the thing with uh, with these GLP-1s, because uh, semaglutide is the first, it's one of the first ones. Now they're coming out with other ones that are more effective. Right, right. It's, bro, I am reading about this stuff and I'm looking at the science. This is weird. I don't know where it's going to go, but this could What's very well. This one, Tr Trizepatide. 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 This could this could very well be one of the most prescribed things ever. Oh, I think it's already on its way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got to be on its way. I mean, it's the only reason why it's not. I bet its trajectory is already there. It just needs time. It just hasn't been around long enough because. But the, but there's also not just weight loss. Like um, there, there's weird studies that come out showing people. Like, I mean, so my not I mean, their nails, obviously not I, drinking alcohol. Like, huh. 
obviously mm-hmm. I know nothing about stocks. I'm just I'll just say that like this is yeah. just fun fun gambling. Yeah. You know, yeah. the gambling for us in a sense. And but here's here's a couple things. One, they're at a 52 week. You low. made a good you made a good point. Yeah. Now that I see <clears throat> this, your case, uh, you, you might have swayed me because now that I see that they actually made this deal with the company Telehealth and yeah. that they're actually yeah, they making money off of it. I business. mean, I mean, Weight Watchers, in my opinion, could look completely different in the next five completely. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm it, thinking old Weight Watchers. Yes. I'm like, how would they? Like, who cares? Who yeah, do that? but I mean, I'm it just that's just like a good old rule of thumb. I was gonna say that's so funny. It's stuck in my head. <laughs> you can still <laughs> so, say it. Just doesn't mean the same thing. Don't start it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to, to you're you're always safer betting on companies that have been around for decades. Of course, you know, be, betting. Betting on some startup or new idea is not a good idea, but a company that has lasted through probably three, four recessions already yeah. and found a way to survive and have been way higher valuation than they are right now. And then they partnered with what we believe. I mean, uh, we've been talking about that this space exploding. There's a reason why we got partnered up or as early as we did, because we believed at where it's going. And they obviously saw the same writing on the wall. Dude. That to me is, it would be naive to think that they are not going to do well it's, because it's, of that. It, these, yeah. this, these, medic, these, these peptides are making such waves that they're scaring. I just opened this episode with high, ultra processed food talk, right? It's scaring companies that like mega companies that N- make Nabisco. ultra processed food. They're just like, yeah. It's freaking them out. Because they're like, uh oh, this is the first time uh, they have maybe come out with something that's going to make people want less Oreos and Doritos and shit like that. Yeah, this is totally not uh, is off topic, but there was this video of these like these really huge like obese guys playing uh, in a band together, and the comment section I, had me just dying. <laughs> yeah, it was like they're they're coming up with names for them. Oh God, you know, like Oreo Feed Wagon, <laughs> <laughs> OBCD. <laughs> oh. Anyways, that just reminded me of that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, just, <laughs> that was, I was dying. Dude, bro. Uh, yeah. I love, yeah. I love. <laughs> Back to my argument, okay, on why we should buy is also too is I think that what happened with Oprah was like the for somebody who was buying the well, stock that, that makes a dip. And yes, because it's it's the you know she is you know to the average consumer the face of Weight Watchers. Yeah. So you see Oprah walk away from it, and the average person goes, "Oh my God, this is all bad news." Are- I just saw. Oh, this is great! Aren't you guys gonna try one of them, a DLP one? I will. I'm yeah, down to I'll, do it because someone has to here. I'm down to experiment. I can't because I'm on too many other peptides. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I have a full disclosure. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know what my happen. Like I got needles in me right now, guys. I feel like I have needles in me right now. I feel like I have four of them that are fighting each other. You know what I mean? They're all doing other. <laughs> no, I know somebody close to me. I don't want to say too much. She just want me. To I've got several her. people, but yeah. I talk to her regularly, and she tells me she's like. I'm like, I know somebody too. I'm like, yeah, are you feel hype? Really you feel energized? Are you weird? Do you feel like agitated? She's like, no, I just feel the same. I'm like, what about food? She goes, I just don't think about it as much. I'm like, do you still like the taste of it? She goes, yeah, I still like it. I just don't want to eat of it. She's like, the other day I had ice cream. She's like, I just had a little bit. Yeah. I don't want to eat more. And I'm, she's like, I'm that's why I want to try it. it. That's why I want to try it. Is I, I know my own so behaviors weird. around things like ice cream and, and sweets. And so it, that's what I'm most curious about. Yeah. Does all, do all of a sudden I can have like this tiny little sc- one scoop of ice cream yeah, and my walk stomach away? stomach problems have ruined that for me already. I'm like, I, I don't have those like, oh, I want this. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like dream about Bro, it. Bro, you know what's so wild? Is, but I'm like, oh. It's, it's alcohol, probably. You know. could have that, and it's wild that we still do stuff. Like yeah. I, there's times when I know, like this is gonna fuck me up, and yeah. I still oh, choose I to go in. I know. Like, that's so bad, yeah. bro. Tonight I'm paying for it, dude. The, yeah, care. the aware exactly. Hey, hey drug like effects. Hey, no, I mean, how many times people hey, do drugs? That's and they ex- know this is gonna suck. Yes, tomorrow. yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, why yeah. it's like it's. I mean, self awareness <laughs> is one step in the process here, but it's it's only one step. It's still you gotta because I'm fully aware. Yeah, I'm what I'm going I used into. To love pizza like that too. Dude. Yeah, you just can't. Dude. Oh yeah. no, that'll oh, destroy me the most. Fuck. Who um who was it that was gonna talk about Chamath on? Uh, was that you? That, oh, yeah, oh, there, there was something that he posted. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Oh. It was controversial. Where am I? Guys oh, oh, yeah. He said, so I, this is on the most recent, um, uh, on the most recent uh, All In podcast. I'm liking him more and more lately. So He's going hard. It was about I thought COVID, it was, wasn't it? Huh? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So it was actually really interesting. And you definitely should take from the clip. And so maybe the YouTube guys, I'll, I'll find out exactly where it is on the latest episode. But he like explains it. And I'm probably going to butcher it, but I thought it was brilliant when he, after he explained it, like, all of his companies that he owns and runs and is a part of, no HR, no matter how big they are, no HR. 
Oh, wow. And he makes the case for how toxic they are because it's like he's like, name an HR where anybody who works there has ever said it's like truly there for them. It's always there to like protect, support the company. It has this this random, you know, private conversations that it has and it has all these rules and regulations and high, he's like, dude, and we're completely transparent. He goes, I have our group of people vote on everything. Like he explained how he operates without one. And it made me go like, dude, why, why would you ever put HR in? And it made me actually want to look at the origin of where that came from and who started that, that idea. I wonder if it actually helps or hurts because mm -hmm. I think the thought process, like we need HR to prevent any potential. So, so what he does is he partners with, he goes for legal reasons, you, you partner with a law firm and you talk to a law firm of, to, to make sure that all your, your, your T's are crossed and I's are dotted for any scenarios where you would need a, a legal team. And so you have that in place. But you operate everything within uh, transparency within the company. And he goes, it's just, and he, he made a really, I've never heard anybody make that argument before. And after hearing it, mm -hmm. and the reason why this is interesting to us, because right now building a, an HR department and everything like that is top of mind for us in this business. And we've been in the process of that for You're still head of HR. You'd right? have to have real healthy yeah, that's, communication. That's right now. I'm still head of HR. Adam's head of HR. <laughs> We're set. <laughs> <laughs> Justin offended me. Yeah. Well, that's because you're a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go back to work. You know? <laughs> Grow up here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who do I report yeah. Adam yeah. to? Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, after listening to that, I'll share it with all of you guys because you guys have to listen to him again, explaining exactly the logistics of how yeah. it works super logical and the other three guys are just like oh my god yeah brilliant makes total sense and of course jason the my least favorite of the four guests try to challenge it with like his his you know his woke ideology yeah and chamath just pfft. you know what happens a lot of companies when they get really big i experienced this a while ago i won't give too many details but i got on a phone call with this company to talk about stuff and it was like a basic conversation we're going to have, you know, having to do with mind pump. And there were like 15 people on the call for the wow. most basic conversation. Okay, let's all yeah. go around the room and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Susie from blah, blah, blah. Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. It's like 10 minutes of intros. And we get have the, and I'm like, it could have been me and you, and we could have been done. Why <laughs> well, do we have that's all a, these people? Make, these corporate, how much yeah, you pay these people sit on this call? Still run things like that. Oh, I, uh, crazy. That's just an example, yeah, I think. Of, corporations. In yeah, I think that's just an example of what happens when you infuse money into a company. Like, I don't know what we used to talk about this when yeah. we first started, when we were like, you just getting going, and you know, like, hey, we, and we would ever we would pine this guy ideas, everything that we had when we first started. And I can't remember who said it out of you guys, but you're like, you know, imagine if we had, you know, $10 million that we could go do this and this. And I'm like, oh my God, that'd be like the worst thing actually, is that we have all these ideas we think are good ideas. And what you would do is you would just go hire people for those ideas instead of actually, which is like the, so a great book to read. I've, I think I've recommended this a long time ago, which is called, um, the guys who started Basecamp, Rework, Rework yeah. is the name of the book. And it's the opposite philosophy of that, which is you should never hire anybody for something in your company until you have worked you do out it first. Yeah, until you do that position first. So you have a true understanding of the value of that position, how hard somebody should work at that, whether it should get all of the above, and then you hire. And until you're willing to discipline yourself to put those hours in, work that, and do that, you shouldn't hire somebody. It's there's so many times. Like, and the opposite happens when yes. you get all of a sudden round, you know, two or series B yeah. or, and all of a sudden they get $100 million of views. Like, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do yeah. that. So we and you have a bunch well, of people. Because the perception too, it's like they want to they want to show that they have all of these things that, that you yes. need them for. Yeah. You know, even if you don't, like they're going to create it. And yeah. So it's like, you got to be conscious of that. Yeah, no, 100%. It's like they're creating their own value. Oh, well, I'm busy. Right. Look what I'm doing. I'm not it's gonna it's say a what, huge bureaucracy you within that, a company. Oh, do you all. remember yeah. that company? I'm not going to say what it was, but, <laughs> but remember that company we visited and we walked, it was years ago. We just like seven <laughs> I years know, ago. Are you and we walked around <laughs> and Wait, we met you, a bunch of- you, I asked all the employees what they did. They couldn't even explain their job. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, this. And then I, like, I, and we're like, oh my God. There's like 15 like people like that know five, five like social Facebook media managers. Related. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Facebook related. Why is there any five Facebook managers? What do you all do? Oh, there's data on this, right? Like how many, like big companies, how much time is actually like productive when people work well, versus how much- Look what happened. Look what happened to Twitter. Twitter's still around. I know. Has, has Twitter, for, for a consumer, has Twitter changed? It's, it's UI. It's more, it's more, it's more efficient. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, and then how many people did he cut? Uh, I think two thirds. Yeah. Didn't he, he cut more than half, right? Yeah. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, like, thousands of people. Yeah. Like to th how, talk about the inefficiency of that business for By someone way, to be able to come people, in and cut thousands of people. For people listening right, right. now, because what, what a lot of people will hear is, oh my God, those people lost their jobs. 
That's terrible. What, yes, that's there are people that lost their jobs, but what you want in markets is you want efficiency because otherwise it's wasted resources, meaning the resources, okay, money, but really money represents resources. When money goes to stuff that's not efficient, it's not that means it's not going to places that it could go to become more efficient, more innovation, yeah. better products. It's, re it's rewarding inefficiency. Yeah, it's rewarding inefficiency. And so your dollar doesn't go as far as it did before because 30% of the jobs or people, you know, are, 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 that are doing or whatever the case is, whatever the number is, it's just they don't have to be doing it. They shouldn't, they don't need to be doing it. And so it's just a waste. So since we're in this conversation, uh, and I want you to listen. I got to go. I'm going to download and listen to the whole conversation. I only saw a short clip of this, but it was, um, what was the name of the guy that we really liked his speech when we were at ARC? I think it was Constantine or- Cohen, Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right? I don't yeah. know how much of his stuff you guys have consumed. But I've seen a few videos of him. He's, he's a, a really, yeah, he's really good You ever heard him debate? Yeah. Oh, he's, Great debater. Uh, he, what's his he, podcast? Trigonomics or something yeah, trigger, like that? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Um, great interviewer too. He does a really good yeah, job. Smart. Yeah. So he was, he was interviewing Eric Weinstein and Eric Weinstein- mm. Uh, brought up a point that I thought was really interesting, saying that we are real time watching capitalism die, mm. and what? and his explanation for that is because the model is getting upended because of what AI is doing. You know, mm. it's always been the harder you work, the better mm. are you are at your job. The more money you make, the right. more customers. He goes, but we are fleeing from those positions and we're replacing that with automation and, and AI. And because of that, it kind of disrupts how the the whole capitalist philosophy. And he goes, and nobody is having this conversation. No one's talking about like, what do we do when it no longer yeah. looks the same that it has looked what, for us? Yeah, what vacuum are we creating for something else? Well, it's still, okay. So capitalism is a, is a kind of a political term. It represents like markets, right? More free market type societies. Um, and markets have always moved towards innovation. That's the goal. That was the goal. The goal was that more innovative, more efficient uh, succeeds, less innovative, less efficient fails. And so we continue to become, we t continue to progress. Products get cheaper. We get better services. We get more of what we want. Necessarily not, not, not necessarily a good thing, of course, because we don't always know what we need, but still that's just what markets do. So AI is a result of that. AI will enter into markets and if markets are still open, then we'll figure out and solve problems based on that. The problem I don't think is going to be that we're not working. I think the problem is going to be like, oh, I have everything I want without. It's working. not even that we're not working. You're just going to have AI to solve what free markets look like. The the the, the, yes. the mathematical capability to compute that will be oh, instantaneous. Well, hold on. This and is so totally, that I know what you're saying now. This is totally different. So in markets, it's about uh, supply and demand, yep. and those dollars, those signals, those buy right. signals dictate price. Now you may have an AI that can read markets in real time and adjust, adjust. prices so fast. Adjust. Wow. And, so you and, can literally go to buy a product and watch the price adjust and, as you walk up and the counter. And the truth oh, is wow, the okay. four or five biggest companies that get there first hmm. are going to have are, are going to be a mon monopoly in a sense because they will have built so what you see Google doing, what Elon's yeah. doing, what mm -hmm. Facebook is doing, mm -hmm. they're all building their own kind of AI models and tools. And the first one to probably get there with their their size and magnitude will now have the ability to, like you said, real time adjust the market instead of allowing the market to unfold, competition to come in because there's a gap yeah. because they're not servicing the market correctly. Well, that gets there. There will always be servicing the market because they'll be able to read the signs instantly. And so, it's just like, and I don't know what you call this, but it's not true pure capitalism anymore because of it's still reading the signs of of supply and demand. It's just faster. Uh, it would just be much faster. Faster than human could possibly do it. Yeah, or faster than markets could do it, for right. sure. Right, that's faster I mean, than markets the and humans. Mar the reason why markets outcompeted, um, you know, non-markets or, or like socialism or centralized markets, because centralized markets did a lot of guessing. They'd have to guess what the right price would be based mm -hmm. off of the labor and based off of, so they would do surveys, they'd have people go out, and it just turned into a ton of, a ton of waste. You had fields of wheat rotting in the Soviet Union, for example, because they couldn't become mm -hmm. efficient, whereas markets are very efficient. But I could see how AI, yeah. if it was connected to everything. Of course. I mean, the beautiful thing about the free market, mm. the way it stands right now is, and you make this point all the time when someone talks about a company, oh, that's terrible. They're doing this. Like, that's okay because they can keep doing terrible business. It pisses off enough people for long enough. It opens the door for somebody else to fill yeah. that gap, offer a service that is either complimentary, competitive to, or cheaper than that person. But if you're, if you've already gained market share and you have this AI capability to pivot and move as fast as the market signs will, will how does anyone ever compete? Like, here comes a competitor. Boom. We just adjusted. We adjusted. Our, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Interesting conversation. Not one that I even thought about. It'll, it's be, and I hadn't heard anybody propose it. He's like, yeah, listen, he goes, gonna be he goes if, if, if John Adams and Karl Marx were alive right now, this would be a, a heated debate, debate between the two yeah. of them. Uh, because they, you would, they would be going. So far, I, Marx has lost, but I mean, we'll see. He has. And I, and I definitely believe he's yeah, lost. Yeah. And I think for the, but one of the things that Weinstein brings up that I think is interesting, an interesting argument is that for the first time in, in, in our lifetime, for sure. So what ever. this reminds me of is uh, when the railroads were being built across America, the people who owned the railroads had so much incredible power, and they became the first yeah. massive yeah, yeah. Real tycoons yeah. mm -hmm. into the point where, and they weren't a full monopoly. That's not true, but it, it was, I mean, you know, some of these guys had so much power and money mm -hmm. that people were afraid. Like, oh, they could literally dictate prices of good there's nothing we could do about i mean it. doesn't that kind of feel like that when you like i mean i've even heard the fear in you when you talk about our business and you're just like i don't want us to do this because youtube could shut us down yeah, here. Yeah. i mean there's a little bit of that fear yeah. already starting to to surface within companies like ours because it's like man they hold so much power and they and, and it is a pla it's a personally owned platform they could just yeah. shut us down or make our lives incredibly at miserable what, tough at what point mm. is innovation just like is it not helping anymore? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like at one point we're like, okay, we, we've been innovated enough. Like maybe we don't need to continue to innovate. It's when we realize that the purpose was found in the hard work. Mm -hmm. We haven't come there yet. No, we still, we still are, or we're still searching for easier, less work, less struggle, less days of work, less time working, faster still, food, faster, faster everything. everything. Yeah. Are we going to find, is, are there going to be video games in the future that mm -hmm. are immersive where you go in your VR and you build houses? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, you like work. Oh, I feel so much better. Yeah. Can't you see that when we're trying to colonize Mars, yeah. you know, and then having all of the uh, 3D printed like materials and everything already there. How long do you think, Justin, before when we go colonize Mars, before Mars declares independence from Earth? Because that's going to oh, happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> why I'm like interested time. to see if like if obviously like that's kind of the drive because we're so driven by purpose. Like what if our purpose is then to get to expand and then yeah. go elsewhere, start another civilization on Mars. That's going to take a lot of work. It will, but let's just say like Mars at some point, the people over there are going to be like, we're not going to take our orders from yeah. Earth. Yeah. Screw you. Earth. Yeah. yeah. We're declaring <laughs> independence. It's like America part two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Screw you know? you. Oh yeah. I could see that happening. Oh uh, Adam, you had some other data that you were going to bring up a bunch of times. I see the note. I want to know what you're talking about. about women talking. Oh, versus men talking. I saw this. I saw this stat and thought, and I, the guys can double check. Maybe Andrew or Doug can double check my numbers. Did you guys know that on average, um, men talk significantly less than women do every single day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. I why mean, are you shocked I mean, about that? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean we laugh because like, you know, but like a lot yeah, like I, so I the, av the average man uses once and and, and we kind of shut down after that it's something like there's yeah. an actual number it is it's five thousand to fifteen thousand <laughs> wow Whoa. one third wow. one third <laughs> so i got i heard hey, really it's in the storytelling uh, <laughs> yeah i mean that's part of it man well, like a lot of that could be cut and condensed you yeah. know so <laughs> give me the facts I, is, this, this is I, I found this really interesting too because well, i consider myself an extrovert but if you saw me at my home, you would not think that. No. I am such a different person inside. I wonder my if you talk more than Katrina yeah. does, though, daily. Well, we have a podcast. That kind of doesn't count. But if you were just in a normal, regular... I bet she would. You think she still talks more than you? Ask her. I don't... I mean, because she's It'd always... would be pretty close, at least. She's already... She's always... Yeah. Pulling yeah. the conversation out of me. At I'm, I'm an outlier. Yeah. I think I'm more I, like yeah. <laughs> you are an outlier. Yeah. Yeah. You are. Like, you're a chick. I'm like a stereotype sure. walking. You're like two, you're dude. Like two chicks. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, like, I like just grunt at home. It's like, I mean, are yeah. you guys like? I mean, how are you, Doug? And how are you, Justin? Like, when you when I when I go home, I'm a bit uh, the average person would think I'm home. introverted yeah. at home. I'm, yeah, very I don't talk so. a lot. Yeah, I uh, I talk a lot all the time. <laughs> But I know I'm an outlier. But you know what's interesting about that? So it's funny is that- Did you find you? my stat to confirm what well, my numbers Well, so I'm seeing conflicting information here. Oh, let's here. see what you're saying. So mm -hmm. there's another study that said that it's largely the same. Women just slightly ahead. Uh, women, 16,215 words a day and men, 15,669. I, I don't believe Oh, no. I, heard, I don't believe I, that. The number I got was, uh -huh. was three I times. almost feel like it's a stupid study. People know this. Come on. If you're a man uh -huh. or a woman, you know this. That, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, well, yeah, I mean it, you know this. Like women, t they do communicate more. They communicate about more things. They connect differently right. than men do. Okay, let me. here's your, here's your evidence right here. Like they're better with details. Here, yeah. Yeah, here's your evidence right here. 
Justin, you and I are in a car. Oh, so you got right here. He's got twenty thousand and thirteen thousand. That you, Andrew? Yeah, I see that too. Yeah, researchers find thirty percent more FOXP two in the brain of girls. This protein is a key molecule for communication in mammals. <laughs> <laughs> we lack something in our brains. <laughs> hey, yeah. So here's your here's your test. Justin and I, we're in the car yeah. and we're driving somewhere three hours away, and yeah. we're driving there, and nobody says a word. For most of the trip. Super comfortable. Do you? With that. Yeah. You don't think to yourself like, no. oh, he's mad at me. Oh, no. I like that. I just, That's oh, totally normal. No. We're just driving. You, you hungry? Yeah. Uh, no? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. Just cruise. Yeah. yeah that, actually, you know, that just, you asked the question about me or Katrina for sure. Because I now, like, one of the things I get frustrated is like, I actually don't like to talk. I want to listen to my music. Oh. And she's always turning down to talk oh, to me about something. Wow. Yeah. And like, I can't even get through a full song. Yeah. Like, oh, I haven't heard one song in this <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah. got an hour and a half drive. I've heard one full song. <laughs> you I pause know. it? Yeah. Do you I know you're pause she, she turns it down. Like, I'll, I'll get it going. And I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling like 30 seconds into my, I'm vibing, right? And then, yeah. hey, you know, tomorrow, when yeah. we that, like, <laughs> you know, in the first couple, I just like, just been a grayer. But after after a while, I'm like, I just don't think we're going to get through this playlist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Funny. I think I'm going to hear a whole song. You know, yeah. it's funny. So yeah, definitely she talks. I I forgot what I was watching with Jessica, but there was like men and women and, and I, I was laughing at the, how the women were communicating versus the men. She's like, yeah, guys are, and women will say this about guys jokingly that were like just basic. You know what I mean? That were just kind of basic or whatever. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll make jokes too. Like, I right, think the word simple, simple, simple. Yeah. 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 simple. And it's, I think it's, I think it's true. Who was it that we were talking to? Was, oh, there was that, uh, years ago on the podcast, we had the transgender athlete on and uh -huh. she was went from female to male. Yeah. And she said she started taking male doses of testosterone. She's like, yeah, I felt my wide kaleidoscope of, of emotions compressed down into like four emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh no. Started objectifying. That's everybody. what it's like. <laughs> yeah. I think she, she did say that. She admitted yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. like, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch, of, bunch of gorillas walking around. Yeah, like, hey, but we invent things. It's hard to control. There's a few of us that invent things. Oh, I like it when guys point to that too. Like uh, uh, they'll get, uh, on, online you see this all the time. Like, you know, men and women argue. It's just stupid. I hate this. But I th also find it comical when dudes on there are like, you know, men invent blah, blah, blah. Men do this. Men, I'm like, you don't. Just because Elon Musk did it doesn't mean that you're, <laughs> just because you're the yeah. same, you both have a dick doesn't yeah, mean you're a man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You, know, you know, we invented, but no, no, bro. There's a, like four guys <laughs> that invented most things and you're not one of them. Relax. Yeah. You're not doing a lot. It always cracks me up. Oh, anyway. It's, it's, so, uh, um, Organifi has a sleep product. You guys haven't tried it yet. I have. Dude, everybody right now, huh? Yes. 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 A lot of people coming out. I like it. I like their sleep product. A lot. I have not tried it. I haven't even seen it. It's got botanicals in there that are good to kind of relax the body, chill you out. Um, it's it's a really good product. And okay, so good. how does it how does it compare to because they would you would normally use their um why can't I think their gold juice? Yeah, gold juice. juice. Oh, oh, you can take them both. Oh, yeah. So their sleep pro their sleep formula is more for occasional nights of restlessness. It's not something you use every night. Oh, okay. It's pretty strong. Oh, their gold juice use it every single night, and you're hmm. totally fine. So, but what, what is in it that makes it? Oh, so there's there's herbs in there like valerian and stuff that really put you. I mean, they're oh. like sedatives. Oh, yeah. So you'll feel you know chill. Oh, interesting. Really good product. Man, I have to. Do, we have so many of these companies Ooh. that we work with that have different sleep products. It would be fun to do like take a, them all at the same time. Well, no, no. Oh. no <laughs> I want to wake up in the morning. So <laughs> please don't take that uh, advice from Sal. Don't, don't, do, don't do what I don't do. do that. No, it'd be interesting to like, uh, you know, a block of, of Ned, a, a block of, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? A, a block of Legion, a block of Organifi and report back the types of sleep, track our stuff. I mean, we have all the so cool stuff. So I think people should try different things because everybody, people who yeah, have sleep have issues. Different chemistry. Correct. So someone might have sleep issues because they need, they, they lack a certain right. nutrient or somebody else is just generally more anxious. The pull up the ingredients, Doug. Is it is it uh gu gummies or is it no? A it's a powder. powder. Yeah. So uh, passion flower, valerian root uh, is in there. Um, chamomile. Chamomile's in there. Lavender. Lavender. So these Theanine. are all. Those are all like these GABA. are all yes traditional herbs that you take for anxiety. Mm -hmm. So if the reason why you don't sleep is because you physically feel anxious, this product will do really, will do really well for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like to see what's in, you know, okay. So Sal, why would you I guess you could I guess you could be getting enough magnesium but still having a hard time sleeping. Yeah. That was such a game changer for me. It was not because was, you lacked it. I know, because I, know. I was deficient in it. And so that magnesium became like a huge sleep. So this for one for me puts it was really nice. Mm -hmm. I've used it now a few nights, it feels real nice. Yeah. Speaking of which with sleep, you measured your sleep quality without with and without 
uh, THC. Uh, why do you got to bring that up? Dude? Huh? Why do you got to bring that up? What do you mean? What do you want to put me on blast? I'm no, start what? talking about your shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? Hey, it's, I think I'm, it's good. I, well, because I'm still wrestling with it. That's why. Because I have this. Okay. It's the deep sleep. Yes. Because here's. And, and that's here, what the data shows. So here's, here's, here's the challenge that I'm having is that. So I went on that. I don't know how long it was. It was like two months, right? Where I went completely cannabis free. And one of the, the things I struggled with was, was good sleep. It was like I didn't feel. I, I And this is actually perceived, right? Even though my, my, my ratings weren't very good either. But there was other things for me to, to probably tease out and test. And then I then I started doing the three two one method. The last this was last week, and I noticed I started improving my sleep score. And th then what I hadn't teased out is like, okay, now that I'm I'm making a conscious effort to eat three hours before, drink only two hours, right? No other trunks. Yeah, hour. being really being really stingent on that or better, right? Um, let me pull the cannabis out and see if I I can still get a good. And really, what it was more like for me to see was. Could I get as good of a sleep because I had already tested no cannabis and felt like I didn't get good so sleep? So what happened? And also uh, leading up to that, remember you were in here talking to Doug and you guys were talking about how your deep sleep was so poorly affected, right? And 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 I and then I think I said it then. I said I wonder if it's the THC affects deep sleep, yeah, every time, right? And so what what, what I was finding on my worrying was I was in I was eight hours of sleep, eight over eight hours yeah. of sleep some nights, but then for some reason I was getting like ten minutes or less of deep sleep. And that was when you made the point about the THC. And I'm like, okay, let me pull that out. Let me see that. And the first time I did that, I got almost two hours of deep sleep right at the gates. And it was the best sleep score I ever got. But I, I didn't feel that way, which is a fucked up thing. Mm. Was I, I didn't wake up better or didn't feel like I got better nights rest. In fact, I actually told Katrina, I was like, man, I felt like a little restless. And, I, and according to my restlessness, I was a little bit up on restlessness, but I, but I did get the deep sleep. And I know the deep sleep and REM sleep are more important anyways. So I'm, You I'm know, like, alcohol does that too. Alcohol, people yeah. will fall asleep, but it, you get no deep sleep. Yeah. It's yeah. really interesting. Well, I also, so there's another thing I haven't tested because I really enjoy cannabis at night is really pushing back an uh, earlier time of having my cannabis because- what I noticed was when I was getting my deep sleep, so deep sleep, uh, and Doug was the one that was like schooling me on this. I, did, I was not aware that deep sleep was like the first bit of your sleep your sleep cycle. Because oh. on my aura ring, my deep sleep always came at the end. Maybe when the THC is wearing off. That's exactly what's oh. happening. So THC mm. wears off, which is also yeah. when I would dream and stuff. Yeah. If I dream, it's after I've got up to the bathroom two or three times, yes. and then it's the back half of yes. the night after it's already wore off for four or five, six wow. hours. And so what I haven't tried yet, which I will mess with is, okay, what if I have, you know, if I, if I do want to have cannabis, maybe I smoke at five or six. And the just, problem with that is then the family's up and stuff. And that, I, I wouldn't want to do that. That's around. why I don't, I don't like to be like that's that. That's why I've, I've been like that, you know, so I have to just stop. So yeah, no, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I did that already. You, you know? know what? It takes, so it, uh, I, I almost completely stopped and it took me two or three months, I think, to finally uh, be totally out of the, what, what may be perceived as mild withdrawal. Took a little while. Yeah, I didn't really feel like I had any withdrawal. I just felt like I'm, I I missed it and I felt like I had better sleep with it than without it. That's how I felt. I'm, I'm sensitive. Well, That's the thing. Well, well yeah, I know. I'm, I haven't completely solved it yet. I, I mean, I'm trying to find a way to have, have my cake and eat it too, right? I want to be able to enjoy that. That's the problem with a lot of uh, sleep products is they don't... In Prove the quality of your sleep. Oftentimes, they just make you fall asleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I guess is better than not falling asleep. Well, yeah, if you're somebody who has a really hard time falling asleep, that which I was before, before the magnesium thing, before I yeah. before Mellow kind of saved me on that. That I used to have a hard time falling asleep. I've now solved that. Like I know, like, and what not to do too. Like yeah. obviously, eating right before or being on my phone or something like that is not a good recipe. Uh -huh. Or talking about business. But if I don't do the the main offenders, I take my magnesium. I'm good. I'm I'm going to sleep, but I have had a hard time getting into my deep sleep, and cannabis is probably wow. the the main culprit of that. That's the most consistent thing they show in studies: is it helps people fall asleep, but it reduces their deep sleep. Yeah, it'd be mm -hmm. interesting to and see. I wonder what the effects would. Be I know. On the brain. I would. I would love to see how detrimental that is to me. That would be another motivating factor. If I'm always getting eight hours of sleep, but I'm missing yeah. two hours of hmm. of uh, REM sleep, which or deep sleep, excuse me. That would be that's a, weird, and, and I wonder how often that is. Like, I can't be the only person. That what are is. the benefits of deep sleep? Do you remember? That's that? the, it says it's restorative for the body. 
For yeah. example, REM sleep is restorative for the mind. Oh. Uh, so, for example, you build muscle during deep right. sleep. Oh, and that's that's, that's my so takeaway from you're it gonna was, build more muscle, bro. No, no, I was like, I would for sure be more buff than Sal right now if I was just getting this. <laughs> that's his true. Only, I mean, I, I don't doubt that for a second. That's his only leg up on me right deep. now. Is he's getting all I'm the deep hell sleep. deep sleep. Yeah, he's getting hell of deep sleep. Oh, if I was getting the same deep sleep, I'd be twice as big as he is right Steve. now. So. <laughs> that's the secret. That's it's, it right there. Uh, hey, speaking of the companies that we work with and stuff. So, Intera's uh, Folatin, right? Their their hair product that regrows hair. It's yeah, got yeah. peptides in it. And it works. It definitely works. It's made my hair darker. I was thinning. It definitely stopped it. Started to reverse it slowly. But do you guys know what a derma roller is? That's where they have the little needles you roll in yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so you know what that is. Yeah, yeah. So it stimulates hair growth to do that. By itself. Yeah, by itself. And then if you do it with that, probably yes. a huge hack. But huh. so have you ever looked at a derma roller? It's a bunch of needles. Mm -hmm. Don't they do it? Some ladies do it on their face? Yeah. Oh, why would ladies do it on their face? Oh, they, they want right. Because of like the, the collagen production. Collagen production. That's oh, exactly that's what, what it does. Oh. It breaks down. It breaks up the-, the So if I- It causes little punctures and yeah, the skin heals. I mean, they look all red and, you know, after done, but then it heals up. So using a derma roller, I haven't used that with- the folatin. I'm going to start doing that. So too. if if I was insecure about my bald head, mm -hmm. I would do the derma roller with the Antera with the red light. To me, oh wow! I would if I really cared. I don't care. You know what I wish I I wish I cared. So for the audience, I could go do it and I could be like, yeah. see, look at. But yeah. I don't care. You <laughs> know what I'm saying, but I know there's a lot it's of people. Better that, you don't. Dude. There's a lot of people that really do a lot, way yeah. more than I thought. Yeah. I didn't realize what a big what a big deal that is. And so if you had the ability to afford a red light, to be able to afford a Terra, and you could do all those things, and the derma roll, which is Oh, you'll see cheap, a big difference. That would be the hack. The hack yeah. would be to do the derma roll, do the Antera, and do the red light, the combination yeah. of all of those. I but think my family cool. members that use the Fulton are, are now like, oh, yeah, I've, I've reordered it. It works really well. Yeah, I mean, if you're Jesse from Full House and you went bald, like, yeah, that's <laughs> your whole identity, <laughs> dude. Bro, you know, like, he would definitely be on the end. He's in the 90s. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> that's for all my uh, hey, 80s fans I had, uh, you ever seen somebody after they've gotten a hair transplant? Have you ever seen them right after? Yeah, like, like doll hair. No, 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 no. I don't mean the hair itself. They uh -oh. actually do a pretty good job now. I mean, like, when they're done with surgery and what their head looks like. And they have all to swollen. Go. You'll never, you would never. And I, I so I have a friend of mine who got it, took a picture, bro. He looked like, like a mushroom. Oh, God. <laughs> swollen and just, <laughs> I'm like, penis hell in. no. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, oh, bro. I'm like, what do you do? How do you sleep? Like, it's nasty. Hell yeah. no. No way. I wonder, I wonder why, uh, why I don't care more. I feel like I, to be rich. Is that why? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. So think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're a dude. Hey, you, so far that hasn't the solved The more money you make, yeah. the less you care about I don't know. That, <laughs> I, think when, I think when I was younger, I thought that was going to solve <laughs> all kinds of problems. It's just, you had shitty it solves teeth a few. like me. We both had like terrible teeth. And, you know, like, yeah. It's it different. Work. That's yeah. different. Bald head's not the same. I don't know. If it's Bald different. heads used to be in style. It's very you know distinctive. That? Men used to shave their heads. They yeah. used to also powder I mean, their I even got, I got psoriasis spots on it. I got a fucked up head, too. I should really. You just know how to rock what you got. It's not that's just how, so, yeah. I don't know. I think you feel that way because I confidently rock it. You're like, yeah, hey, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I got you fooled even. <laughs> Shave my head. <laughs> stop, I'm going to stop using Fulton. Yeah. When we first started talking about that, I remember that was like, the, I think I got more DMs on that than almost anything else. Yeah. I could yeah. see though, there's some, I know people who in their 20s started to go ball. That's when it sucks when you're that young. You yeah, know? one of my best friends. Well, yeah. actually, two of my best friends. Yeah. One of my best friends started to go. One of my best friends jacked, completely so bald. Helps. Dude, that's yeah. the key. Yeah. If you're a dude and you're young bro, and you, you start to go bald, bro, that's the key to being just get jacked. That's the no, answer to being ugly. I don't understand why. <laughs> if you were, if you were exactly. ugly, if you got you a body on you, yeah, you got don't even be. You could have it. Yeah, if you're ugly, that's yeah. if you get ripped. You There's can work on that. Look, that's genetics, right? Your hair is genetics. Fallotin's a good product, but a lot of it's genetic, right? So genetics. But there's two things you could do that'll just take like whatever points you lose with that, like get jacked and make money. You could work towards that. Maps in a bottle. Yeah, nobody it's cares. A perfect anymore. commercial. Map. <laughs> it's the one yeah, right you know, like it's, it's, it's waiting for, to happen. For all you ugly people. Bro, maps anabolic. Maps anabolic. Change your life. And maps anabolic. Advanced are both on sale. So all the guys out there, <laughs> I knew, both of those get programs. Get on those. If programs. you're bald, get on those. You're, Jeez. You'll get girls. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the shout out for today? I have a shout out. Yeah, I'm gonna shout out Joe Rogan because he needs it. No, what? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He like he needs he any needs more it. listeners. No, the Cat Williams interview with Joe Rogan. Did you finish? Did you oh, the song? That's I just the only started Joe Rogan I've ever listened to oh. from beginning to end. It so does he help just talk about a bunch of stuff that makes you think like, what the hell? 
I, you know, isn't I mean, he like revealing a bunch of like behind the scenes? I don't even know if I'd say that. It, we just, you know what? I guess uh, so. I listen to Cat. I've, I've been listening to Cat Williams since like his very. He's first. just an interesting guy. I've all I've always. Uh, I shouldn't say always. I don't like his newer stuff. I liked his old stand up. I thought he was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how intelligent he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's Mensa. Do you know that? He, do you know that he reads like sixty books a week? Wow, yeah. every week. Wow. Yes, on a normal week. Wait, well, he said from like what nine yes. to twelve, he was basically didn't go anywhere, didn't celebrate anything, didn't hang out with friends. Like he would just read, you know, uh, eight something books a day or something. Wow. Yeah, his he, he's like, I, I don't know. I guess I guess uh, I'm intrigued by his brilliance. Like, because you don't, if you watch the stand up and you didn't know, no, better, you don't think he's. A you super, don't think. I mean, no. he he plays a character of a pimp. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and he and he doesn't use any like he doesn't speak in 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 uh you know he doesn't it, give it away. You don't think no, you would no. not know until you start asking him, and then and then you could see how smart he is, even the way he communicates to Joe. Like, there's times when he's talking to him and he's real slow to answer because you could tell he's like mm -hmm. he's yeah. thinking in layers right. of like how to explain wow. or communicate to him. How this is gonna come across? Yeah, and his and he the stuff that he's read, he's read. All over the place, all yeah. over everything you could think of. Bro, he brought the emerald tablets. I got so happy. I never even heard of that. <laughs> what the hell? Is that? I didn't even know. Joe didn't know what that was. What's I didn't an know emerald that tablet. Was. Uh, it's so it's it's the, the Egyptian god Thoth. So it's these em emerald tablets that it's like I'm not gonna say a lot about it. Like you should go like <laughs> check it out and read it. Like so you would definitely get really? into it. Yeah, just like it's it's a really interesting read. Uh, okay. Start with that conversation. Yeah. You'll you'll enjoy the conversation. It's, no, a, it's, a, it it's a great. It's a and they get in a little bit of uh of of God and religion talk with Joe, which oh, I thought was yeah. interesting because you know Joe's where he's at with that, uh -huh. and so it was interesting to watch Cat and him go back and forth on on that. And I thought it was I I don't ever listen to Joe from that the whole thing. That was the first like whole Joe. But then again, I'm you're the third person that's told me to listen to that. I, it's just yeah. it was interesting conversation. I'll check it Super out. interesting. Paleo Valley makes the best meat sticks you'll find anywhere in the world. These are grass-fed. They're not dry. They're delicious. They're good for your body. They're good for your gut. It's grass-fed beef. It's the best on-the-go snack. Go check them out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump, and on that link, you'll get an automatic 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Sarah from Canada. Hey, Sarah. How can we help you? Hi, guys. How Thanks you doing? for doing? question. I'm good. Thanks. Um, I wanted to start off by saying, honestly, a huge thank you through your podcast and your messaging. Honestly, so many of my long-term prayer requests have been answered. So it's been a really important role in my life and I really can't thank you guys enough. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you awesome. so much. What can we do for you? All right. So I'll just start by reading my question. Um, so about a year and a half ago, my husband and I bought the RGB Super Bundle and we completed the aesthetic program last week. We wanted to go back to anabolic to kind of see our strength gains. And honestly, the strength gains were crazy. I mean, my husband, he's been weightlifting for 12 years and his PRs were like through the roof, which made me really excited because I was the one that convinced him to buy this program. <laughs> so yeah. it's a win-win for both of us. This is this is a lesson he will continue to learn in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. um, however, transitioning back to the anabolic program has present, presented challenges for me, particularly in this first phase, which emphasized the low rep with high weight. I find myself hesitant to increase the weight on the squat rack mainly due to fear and a lack of confidence. And I struggled to maintain my grip for an effective deadlift. So my goal for March is to bulk before ent entering a cutting phase for the summer. Mentally, I find it difficult to commit to a bulk when I feel unsure that I'm stimulating growth in my lower body. I feel like I can lift heavier, but the fear of the weight, and if I'm being honest, tight hip flexors are holding me back. Um, I know that I want to improve my squat and deadlift, but at this stage, focusing on them right now as technical skills seems counterproductive to my goal of maximizing strength during this bulking phase. Instead, I want to prioritize strength development now and reserve the skill development for summer. So my question is, do you have a program or any recommendation that will allow me to effectively target my lower body without having to put maximal effort in squatting and deadlifting? I'm eager to make the most of this bulking phase and don't want these problems to hold me back. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. We have map symmetry would be amazing for you, especially since you followed 
the core programs, <laughs> anabolic aesthetic, uh, performance and aesthetic. But I do want to go back. Let's get a little bit more specific. Yeah, I have some advice. For Let's that. talk about the problems that are preventing you or making you not want to focus so much on the deadlift and squat. So you mentioned grip and then fear. Mm -hmm. Those are the two. That's basically it, right? Those are the two that we're talking about. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, so for deadlifting, it's gripped. For squatting, it's fear. And then also, like, I do think I have, like, tight hip flexors. Um, my husband actually bought me the the hip mod for mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm hoping to do that. But, um, yeah, mainly fear. Fear is a big one. Um, and then just feeling tight tightness in my hips. Okay, so let's start with the deadlift. Are you using, are, have you played with an alternate grip or a hook grip? And using chalk, have yeah. you played with those things? Okay. Alternate grips, uh, chalk, no, but alternating grip, oh, yes. chalk will make a big difference. Chalk, yeah. typically, you can lift uh, anywhere between, you know, 10 to 20 more pounds uh, for some people with chalk. So I would use chalk. Do you go to a gym or do you work out at home? We, we go to a gym, yeah. So you can buy liquid chalk because most gyms, um, they, don't, they don't like powder chalk. But you can buy liquid chalk and it's actually quite effective. So I would give that a shot. And, mm -hmm. um, and then you can also add a set or two after, let's say, a bicep workout or at the end of an arm workout, another workout, you could add a set or two of grip strengthening uh, type exercises. So isometrics, you can, you're can you already getting that with the deadlift. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily do more isometrics, but I would do more grip, like crushing uh, type exercises. You could buy a gripper and do this. Now, I wouldn't do it to crazy fatigue because you will find that it'll it'll affect your grip in a negative way by overtraining it. But I would get a nice strong gripper and I would go moderate intensity and just do a few sets, you know, maybe twice a week. And that should have some carryover to your grip. So, I have, you I have something. I actually have something for both the grip and the fear. Um, and the, the reason why this comes to mind so quickly for me is because I, I totally remember this almost exact conversation with Katrina, and I remember her presenting it very similar to how you did. And it was like, yeah, I just, uh, one, the, we were having a hard time with going up in weight with the the deadlift, getting uh, her getting over 200 pounds. That's where she we started to notice that. And then just the fear of putting more weight on her back, even though when I watched her do the five reps, like at 180, it was, she did, she had great form, but yet just afraid to like, oh, what if I can't get it all the way up? And I said, listen, give yourself permission to do singles, doubles, or triples. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I know the program's laid out and we're telling you to get, you know, five, five reps, but there's nothing wrong with you putting too much weight on the bar and you actually only get two or three. Like, that's fine. Like, stop there. If you feel like you can't get to five, stop at rep two, rep three. <clears throat> but what will happen is just by getting over that fear of increasing the weight, you're uh, like going heavier. And then, hey, I just stopped at one or I just stopped at two. Your body will start to adapt to holding that much weight or putting that much weight on your back. And you'll, one, help overcome the fear. And two, you'll see your grip strength go up because you're now holding more weight than you've ever are, had before. Are you also, are you using a squat rack too with safeties? <clears throat> Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to press because the fear is, uh oh, if I have to hit the safeties, you know, what am I going to do? Practice that. So get under a bar with your normal weight, something you can handle, squat all the way down, dr put it on the safeties, get out, get used to the feeling of, oh my God, if I can't make it up, I can just put it down on the safeties and you're totally fine. It's a very, very safe way to fail on a rep is to put the weight down on the safeties. But you ha you want to practice that because you've never done that before. It could be a bit terrifying. Like, oh, uh, what am I going to do? So literally, I would get clients and I would teach them. I taught my clients two things. One, how to put the weight down on the safeties and feel like that's okay. And, and, the, and the, the question is, how do I know when to put the weight down <coughs> on the safeties? When you're struggling and you feel like your form is about to change. So don't wait until like you literally fail and have to drop the weight. That could cause injury. But when you're pushing and you're like, uh oh, like you, I, I, I'm gonna have to tweak my form. Just, just put it down on the safeties. It's yeah. not a problem at all. Um, the second thing I used to teach my clients was how to dump a barbell. Mm -hmm. But if since you have safeties, you don't need to learn that skill or that technique. <laughs> now with the hip flexors, sometimes it's also weak hip flexors that are causing the problem. <laughs> so you might want to try this very simple movement where you lay flat on the floor with your body out flat, like you're, you're totally straight out. And then with one leg, keep the other leg on the floor. Just do some leg raises where you tap your heel on the floor and come back up. 
and do a couple sets of that on each leg, not, not to fatigue, but enough to feel the hip flexor, then go squat, see if you notice the same tightness in your mm -hmm. hip flexors. And oftentimes uh, that, that seems to, to handle the problem. Yeah, kind of piggybacking on that in terms of the fear and like kind of setting yourself up with the squat. Uh, one thing that, um, that I actually did this with Courtney as well. So we'd, we basically would take um, a weight that she could normally do um, pretty easily, like five reps or so. Uh, then we would rack the weight and I would add just, you know, five pounds on each side. Then we kind of work our way up and she would just acclimate. So she would just like lift it off, step back and then brace and, and go through all that, then go and, and re-rack it. And just so stand. She, just to stand, just so you, you get used to the weight and you realize that, you know, you have control, you have strength, you you can stabilize uh, appropriately. Uh, and it just psychologically kind of gets you used to kind of placing that amount of load on your back. S something we did very similar to that, that Katrina and I did to get through. So let's say you're, you know you can get 180 for five, and that's kind of where you – anything more than that, you get fearful, let's say. I don't know if that's the exact number, but let's say what that's what it is. So then what I would do is like, hey, today for maps and a bulk in this phase, like we're going to do something a little bit different. Like instead of just doing these kind of five-by-five five or a three-by-five five routine, I'm going to have you – we're just going to do the the negative. So I would start her off, get to the 180, and then I go, okay, we're going <clears> to – I'm going to put 200 on there. Now all I want you to do, hun, is you're just going to slowly put it down on the, on the, on the safeties. safeties. That's it. Like just put that's when we're gonna do one rep. That's it. One rep of you just slowly setting it down. And then I I go, how was that? She'd be like, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Like, okay, cool. Then together we'd lift it back up, let her have some rest. Then I'd put 210 on there. And then I go, okay, just let it slowly come down one time. That's it. Just one time, as slow as you could, set it, set it down like that. And I go, how was that? Actually, not as bad as I thought of it. Okay, let's go 225. I just kept doing that with her for single reps. It's just get her comfortable with just feeling what decelerating with one or with heavier and heavier and heavier weight. And then I said, okay. And, I, and once I saw like, wow, she could literally do like 250 yeah. and be okay and comfortable. Now I'm like, okay, we could, we could do 220 and we'll get 220 on there and we'll just, hey, if you feel like you can't get you just out, put it down. just yeah. put it down. And then, and then it was, then once we got past that fear, she was a lot better, but that's a way to do that is to, and again, it was like giving her permission. She always like, well, I thought I had to do five reps. I'm like, well, no, you don't have to do five reps. I mean, that's the programming. But when you're trying to get over this hurdle of adding more weight, just give yourself permission that maybe you'll only do one rep. And, and then, by the way, to this day, this is how I lift. Like there's many mm -hmm. times where I decide like I'm going into a lift and I, I kind of want to push it. I want to put some heavy weight on there. And I get under there with the intent, <laughs> I want to do five reps, but I quickly find out after rep one, like, oh shit, I'm not getting more than two or three of these. And then I just re-rack it right there. Yeah. <laughs> so I got some good news to you, uh, for you too, Sarah. First off, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a previous injury that you're worried about re-injuring or something like that? Okay. No, no, there's, there's two, generally two kinds of people that would come to me as clients that would be afraid of going heavier because they don't feel confident under the weight. One of them was someone who had a terrible previous injury. Like I tore my ACL or I hurt my back. I'm really afraid of going heavy because of re-injuring it. The other category was women. Women generally, you typically don't see this with men. In fact, with men, it tends to be the opposite where I'd be like, that's way too much weight for you. But typically women would say to me, uh, I'm afraid of going heavier. I'm, I'm afraid of going heavier. So what's the good news? The good news about this is once you get over this fear, the most empowering feeling you're going to get uh, that you're going to feel through strength training is gonna, you're going to feel. Like you're going to feel so empowered that you can struggle under a weight and move it. And, and now imagine the carryover to everyday life. And this is just, again, you still see this with, with men and women where men tend to be encouraged to struggle under heavy objects. Women tend to be discouraged. Once you practice this in the gym and you get, you get used to it and you, and then you can really feel your capacity. That's what's empowering is you're underestimating your capacity because of the fear. You'll get a more accurate uh, more accurate understanding of what your capacity is. And boy, is that empowering. It's going to feel amazing once you practice this and get Plus used to it. And your body responds like never before. Oh, yeah. And then your yeah. results are going to yeah, be ridiculous. It's, it's, You're going to put unreal. muscle on. You unlock it. like a whole new yeah. uh, level of training. So, yeah, once you get that psychology down. So, really, it's ritualizing it. And you get over the fear the more you practice all totally. the stuff that we're talking about. Do you, do you, so symmetry, I think, would be a good program, though, to go with. Um, do you have that? Because we can send that to you. I don't have that. No. All right. Um, that'd be amazing. Yeah. We'll shoot that over to you. Yeah. Follow that okay. one and, and then keep your eyes open for the one that's coming after that. Cause I think that one's going to be even better. Mm. Oh snap. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. That's very mysterious. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Well, yeah. Actually, right. I just have one quick question. I hope that, that that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead, um, Sarah. I, I have like, so he got me the butt, butt mod, the quad mod, and the hip pain mod. Are those okay to do like on off days or how do I incorporate them? So the mods, so the hip pain mod, you can do that. Yes, that's, that's correctional exercise. The butt mod or the other like body part mods, what you would do is you would replace the exercises in, a, in your program that target those areas with the mod uh, programming. Now, I will say this. With map symmetry, don't use any of the mods. Yeah, just follow it. Follow map symmetry to a T. Yeah. If you're going to use the mod, do it when you go back through anabolic or when you go back through aesthetic or, or, or even performance. Yeah. But with symmetry, follow symmetry. Don't, don't modify it. Okay. And is symmetry like, because I am mentally preparing for a bulk for this last month before summer, is it okay to do that? Like, am I going to all see results. Yeah. All of our programs are strength training based. So all of them would be appropriate in either a bulk or a cut. What you'll find with symmetry, you're going to build muscle, you're going to build strength, but you're going to build more of it, uh, in the areas that are, um, unsymmetrical. So we've seen DEXA scans, for example, with people who followed map symmetry and they'll gain five pounds of muscle. But then when they do the mm -hmm. DEXA scan, they see like, oh, wow, my left side, you know, was behind my right. And so most of the muscle gain was on the left side. So now things are more balanced. So you're going to notice that in your physique, but also in your performance, because uh, that's what the program is designed for. But yeah, it's a, it's a great program to follow in a bulk. Why don't we why don't we have Doug put her in the forum, too, so we we can stay in touch with you as you go through this? Because we got a couple. Oh, I feel like we gave you like five different things we're working on here. So Machine I'll have, I'll have that, Doug yeah. put you in the private forum. If you're, are, you, are you in there? You're not in there, are you? No, I'm not. That okay. would be amazing. Yeah, we'll put you in the private forum, and then as you're going through this process, you can just tag us and ask us any questions. Let yep. us know. Yep. That's great. You got awesome. it. Awesome. All right, Thank Sarah. you, guys. I appreciate the help. Thank All you. Right. All right. Okay, so what percentage of- 27. Why? Okay, cool. I'm glad you had that <laughs> ready to go. That's awesome. Let's see how close I am. I don't know what, how you knew, knew what's exactly what I was going to ask. No, no. What percentage of wives- started listening to Mind Pump because of husbands, and what percentage of husbands started listening mm. because of wives? I feel like it's a much higher percentage of like husbands that. that started listening because of wives. I hear yeah. that all the time. Yeah. Oh, I definitely I definitely think that. For sure. I mean, it, it, think about it. A, po our, a, a lot of our podcast is giving direction. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mm. men are terrible at taking yeah, direction. Are. So it's more, way more likely that a, a, a wife found us and then has slowly convinced the yeah. husband. Yeah. And I'd, I'd be willing to bet that that's like, it's a 50-50 shot that can do it. Because I think half the husbands would probably dramatically benefit from listening, but just in, at spite that my wife told me to listen yeah, to it, yeah. I'm not going to do it. I don't yeah. need that. I know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. So I feel Who like, are these guys? Yeah. yeah. Why are you listening to them? Yeah. I'm sure we'll get some comments. They, I they confirm if you are if you were a wife listening and you've tried to get your husband to listen, how how many of you have had the stubborn husband that refuses to and how many of you guys have? It's because then he looks at the picture and he sees Adam's face. He's like, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> handsome. Yeah. Um, you know what she said though about fearing like lifting heavier super common definitely i mean this is something that um female clients used to talk about all the time but boy when they get over it <clears throat> it is like they open a new door it yeah. just feels amazing this i personally i felt um tremendous value myself remember when we all first started hanging out i had told you guys this so i've been what i trained 10 15 years before yeah. we all first started hanging out and i had never trained singles doubles or triples yeah. ever like so that was a big like thing step for me was just getting comfortable, like going like, Oh, I can do three reps and yeah. actually get a good workout doing three reps and just giving myself that permission to do that low of a rep range. Obviously, if you know, you only got to get a couple, you're, you're like, Oh, okay. Well, if I do this much for five, I could easily do 20 more pounds for two or three, giving yourself that permission to do yep. that. Yep. Allow and me it's a to, different feel. Yeah. And then you get acclimated to feeling that kind of weight on there. And now you're more confident mm -hmm. with it going forward. Our next caller is Alicia from Virginia. Alicia, how's it going? How you doing, Alicia? Afternoon. Hey, uh, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> um, so, I'm a little, sorry, I'm a little starstruck here in Starbucks right now. Um, but Justin, I wore my still emo shirt today <laughs> because I'm love it. I am 37 years old and I still mosh pit. So I thought you would appreciate that. <laughs> oh, yes. wow. All right, all right. The few the proud. Sal and I will get a sandwich. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, well, Adam, I watched your Warriors kind of beat up on the Wizards last night. Oh. I was at that game. Oh, you was, were there? 
Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, it's uh, it's Wizards suck. I just I go to watch all the other teams. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we like you. Yeah, we we dumped Jordan um, Pull on you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. With big boys on that team. Mm. That's for sure. Um, so I'll get started and I'll um, I'll read my question. But I wanted to thank you guys first for one episode in particular. I've been listening to you guys for probably like six or seven years now. But um, I think it was like this past fall when you had John Delaney on for mm. the How to Live a Non-Anxious Life. Like I'm somebody that has struggled with anxiety since like before it was trendy to have anxiety. And I was I finally like I sent that um, episode to my husband who doesn't understand it. And it literally was like a pivotal turning point in our oh, marriage cool. because he finally could like understand all the things that I've always tried to say. So I'm really grateful That's for awesome. that. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Love John. Um, so I will get into my question here. Um, basically, kind of the premise of it is that I've been competing in Olympic weightlifting now for about like six or seven years. I'm 37 years old. I've got three kids, um, and I'm, I'm ready to kind of like take a step back from competing for a little bit. I love my sport. I've been grateful that I'm good enough that I've been able to compete with kind of like the 18 to 25 year olds this entire time. And strength has always been something that's really important to me. Like back in the early 2000s when everybody wanted to look like Britney Spears, like I saw China wrestle in the WWE and was like amazed at her arms and just wanted to be fit and strong. And Olympic lifting has really allowed me to get to that level. But mom life is kind of like needs to step up and be more important. I want my kids to have their time to shine and stuff like that. And I just really don't have like the two plus hours a day to kind of keep training, to keep competing at like a national level. So my question kind of revolves around what do you think or would suggest would be the best way to kind of maintain the strength that I've spent the last like 15, 16 years building, even when my volume and intensity isn't what it used to be. Because there's a lot of lifts that I, or a lot of numbers that I've hit that I'm really proud of. And I'm, I'm understanding that, you know, some of those will come down or whatever, but like, I still want to be able to back squat 315. And even if I'm not having such like high volume all the time. Yeah. Great, great. Qu- okay. So competed in Olympic lifting for six years or so. Did you work out before mm-hmm. that too? Yeah. 15 years. 15 yeah. total. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Have I you was s- always that like, I was that only girl that was in the weight room when I was in high school and stuff like that. So like for 20 plus years, I've always, always been strength training. That's awesome. Al- Alicia, have you seen the data on how much training is required to maintain muscle and strength once you've built it? Uh, yeah, I've listened, and I've listened to you guys kind of talk a lot about how like, it's it's like almost like a third of the training volume or so. Like a seventh. Sometimes yeah. some mm-hmm. studies show even less. Mm-hmm. Seventh. You crazy. would be okay. shocked and surprised at how, how much strength you're going to maintain by training less, a lot less, like half as much. I bet I, you're going to be absolutely shocked at how, um, how well you respond. In fact, <clears throat> You might actually feel better. Now, yeah. there are benefits to training a lot if you can handle it, which is just the time being there and you're being very mm-hmm. present, especially for someone who has anxiety. I'm, I'm one of those people as well. So there's that that I'm that's, that we're going to carve aside. But in terms of like strength, performance, muscle in particular, the muscle mass itself, you won't lose mm-hmm. it. You won't yeah. lose it by working out, by going from two hours to one hour a day. What you would need to do with mm-hmm. your training is prioritize effective lifts. The mistake that people make is they try to double the intensity to make up for the reduction Mm -hmm. in time and volume. Don't do that. Train like you normally would. What you would do is just cut the volume in half or remove exercises that aren't as important and insert them every once in a while when you feel like you need to. And you're going to be, I'm surprised every time I do this at how well, not only do I maintain, (laughs) but in fact, I I oftentimes- find myself uh, progressing and I realized, wow, I was actually training a little too much. So to go from mm-hmm. like how, so you, you training two hours a day, what are you looking to do? Go down to one hour a day or less? Than that? Um, I think like right now that's probably like, I would like to get to a spot where it's like an hour a day, four times a week. I do, I do go to like yoga twice a week to maintain my mobility and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, you know, I just, I don't have the time for the, those long sessions to maintain oh, at that high level. And I'm okay. I'm totally okay with that. You're fine. Um, and yeah, I see, I see two uh, really good options for you. Either one, a 
MAPS anabolic protocol two to three times a week, that's it, of training the full body, that type cool. of routine, or um, a MAPS 15 advance. Where you're, so it de- and it would really depend mm-hmm. on what you prefer. If like you like the idea of coming to the gym, you know, five, six days a week, well, then I would push you in the MAPS 15 direction. But if you're really trying to mm-hmm. reduce the amount of time in, uh, that you're having to go to the gym, but yet still maintain everything you've built, then a MAPS anabolic two to three times a week. A full body. Yeah. yeah. Do you, are you going to still be doing your, mm-hmm. your Olympic lifts or are you okay transitioning away from Olympic lifts and moving more towards uh, like traditional strength training? Um, I would like to still be able to kind of like, you know, sprinkle them in every so often oh, because I mean, it is, re- it's really fun to like, you know, hit a heavy dude. clean and jerk and, you know, throw the barbell around and stuff like that. But run a map, um, I'm okay. A map, stepping back, run a maps, 15 advanced protocol and then, ju- and then just yeah. supplement the Olympic lifts. Every once it's literally while. 30 yeah. minutes a day. Uh, you're doing like Throwing two, clean and jerk maybe yeah. two compound lifts a day. You could replace one of them with a power with a, a Olympic lift. And I'll tell you, look, I'll tell you my personal story. I went from how I typically work out to this protocol and I hit a PR in deadlifts at 43 years old. Say that, yeah. mm-hmm. so, so it's like, I thought, oh, at first I was like, wow, I'm not losing any muscle. This is amazing. And then I was like, what the hell? Like I'm stronger. I'm getting stronger. This is remarkable. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. you might be surprised. You've built such a solid base yeah. on your body that it would take it would take you being completely sedentary and eating low calories for all that to go away. That shift in volume is probably really going to benefit. Yes. yes. Yeah. Like I, you're going to notice yeah. like an immediate strength output gain. It's going to be crazy. This mm-hmm. by far has been one of my favorite parts of aging. Like I didn't, I didn't foresee this, that when I got into my forties, that were all this hard work that I've done for two decades of training, how much it would pay off as far as being able to maintain the strength and physique that I always, I mean, the amount of volume that I train at in comparison to 15 years ago is insane. Yet I can maintain a better physique and more strength with way, way Mm -hmm. less volume. And it's just, and it's a testament to all that hard work that you've done for all these years, especially considering Mm -hmm. you've done this in like Olympic lifting. Like you didn't just lift for 15 years. Like you lift at a high level. You've built a Mm -hmm. significant uh, base that ain't going away. Yeah. You mean you squat in 315. Holy cow. You know, here's the other thing to consider with Olympic lifting. Olympic lifting is a very special uh, form of strength training in the sense that now all mm-hmm. all competitive strength, you know, training based sports, there's a high degree of, of 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 technique and skill involved in the performance. But that is very that's especially true for Olympic lifting. So the mm-hmm. reason why, if you compare Olympic lifters to power lifters to I don't care what other strength sport that competes and actually you know lifts. Uh, type events, when you compare them, Olympic lifters tend to work out the most. And you wonder why are they working out? Like Olympic lifters have been known to be in the gym for three hours or four hours. It's not the, Mm -hmm. it's not, (laughs) it's not the strength and muscle stimulating effects that they're after. It's perfecting the technique. It's they're literally, Mm -hmm. you know, this you're practicing Mm -hmm. so that you can get just perfect with your lift because you know, that perfection will add, you know, 15 pounds to the bar versus, you know, getting the muscles technically to be stronger or bigger. So you don't mm-hmm. need, especially if you're not competing and you don't need to like have the absolute most perfect technique with your lift. I mean, if you've been practicing as long as you have, your technique's always going to be pretty good so long as you sprinkle them in. You might not be as perfect with your skill as you were before because you're not practicing them as much, but I think your skill's going to your skill's going to stay good and as far as like the muscle and strength component, that's not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's one of those, I mean, as, as you guys know, like you spend all that time, Adam, you just said like building all of that and you're like, man, I really don't want to go that, like have that go away at all. And, um, you know, and there's other things too, like, you know, I'm really anxious to, you know, your physique when you're a strength-based athlete is very different than when you like transition to kind of more of that bodybuilding, yeah. lifting for health type thing too. So like, Kind of just having all that information go away and freeing up some of that time and stuff. It is it is something I'm really looking forward to, but it's just really cool to like lift really heavy. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. Like, Hell yeah. It's, 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 I'm so selfish with it. Like I love going mm-hmm. to the gym and stepping onto a machine like after a dude and it's still the same way down there. <laughs> so I just didn't, really didn't want to like have to like lose any of that. I, at I think all. you I don't you think you are, you're yeah. gonna be pleasantly surprised on how much you're gonna be able to reduce and still be able to be that girl. Yep. You're totally. gonna still gonna be able mm-hmm. to get in there and, and drop that kind of weight and literally and like Sal pointed out, you may be surprised. 
guys, you actually might mm -hmm. notice you reduce the volume significantly and you might see yourself get yeah. stronger, which is crazy Absolutely. to think because how mm -hmm. strong you already are. But mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to see huge benefits from it. How often have you done like stints of hypertrophy training? Um, we kind of, we sprinkle it in all throughout, um, all, all throughout the year based on like what meets we're doing, mm -hmm. but our hypertrophy training is more like that to 10 back squats and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, heavier clean pulls and stuff like that. But I do usually actually, since you release, um, the, um, symmetry, usually I do that like after a competition for about four weeks oh, to kind of correct some of those imbalances before That's we kind of get back into the next training cycle. So I do really... I, I love like the the flow of all of your programs and stuff like that. That's why I wanted to reach out to you guys That's about it. You know, you know, Alicia, I, so something just occurred to me. So I, I like maps 15 advanced version. I think that would be a great staple program for you, but I do have a program that I think might scratch that competitive itch, that feel that you have from performing old time better me? maps, okay. old time strength. <laughs> I yeah. think it's, I thought that too. It's just a lot of volume. I, I, I bet you would. I mean, you're not going to be two hours in the gym. It, yeah, it's not at all. Be two hours, You'll be in the gym an hour. Yeah. But that, I think that program, uh, especially because you have the overhead stability already from mm -hmm. Olympic lifting. Oh yeah. yeah I yeah. bet you're going to do those lifts, and you're going to have to learn them at first uh, if you've never done like a bench. Challenge the hell out of you. But I think sure. you're going to you're going to love the hell out of it, and you're not going to be in the gym. Uh, it's worth giving it a whirl. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm I would totally do that. Yeah, I love all that not like unconventional kind of training and stuff really? like that too. So that's I didn't e I didn't even think about the oh, old yeah. time. Personally, so, yeah, that's a cool. Personally, I, I would like to that. see you do Maps 15 first, just so you could see what mm -hmm. potentially reducing that much volume. I does selfishly want to yeah. see her do old time. No, I want to <laughs> see. Be, I think she'd be doing some crazy. I think shit. so too, but yeah, I also she, think she, that yeah, I, the, the, point. the desired outcome of this is to try and really yeah, yeah, reduce no, you're being volume. trainer Adam, I And I think yeah. that just go through Maps 15 <laughs> one time, so you can just yeah, see your body feel, responds. Yes, That's and it. then go to yeah. old time. Then yeah, hit it. We'll set. We'll send 15 over to you. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. You got it. All right. Yeah, there's definitely part of me, selfishly, someone like that. I want to see you do old time. I know. Yeah, I bet no. she'd do some crazy shit. No, Especially with her background. Yeah, that'd be no, amazing she would to be watch. Great, and it's a and it is a great program. I just I think that someone there, because uh, we've all been there ourselves, uh, needs to experience a dramatic reduction in in volume. You're right. To see, like, you were being a trainer. Yeah. I was being, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. But I mean, guy. that might be the perfect thing: is run through Master Fifteen and then go through old time strength, and she might, and you know, find out. And and also to the audience that's listening, like, you know, of course, like we we talk about how we've we've built these, uh, you know, structures, but we encourage people to modify. And if I had a client like this yeah. who was really proficient at yep. Olympic lifting, I would just make it a, a, like we would have a day that's like, it's all she's doing is one Olympic lift, like just practicing yep, the Olympic yep. lift. And that's a day. That's a, mm, that's a sure. lift. You know what I'm saying? Those, those lifts are so incredible. And, and the practicing of that and doing say five to 10 sets of it, like that's enough like volume for a day and she'll get tremendous Especially benefits. with the base that she's built. Yes. Our next caller is Owen from Nebraska. What's up, Owen? What's going on, Owen? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. I really it, appreciate all you've done for me and the rest of the community. Right on. Thank you, you, dude. What you got for us? What's going on? I, yeah, I guess a summary of my question. I am uh, 21 years old. I'm 6'3", about 200, 205 pounds. I've been consistently strength training for about two years. I trained in high school for sports and stuff, but I just didn't really see much progress. And when I was about three years ago, I was 180, 6'3", uh, probably 20% body fat. Now I'm like 200 pounds, 16% body fat. This summer I went on a cut uh, from 200 pounds at 90% body fat down to 180 at, to 9% body fat. And that was the leanest I'd definitely ever been in my life. I've, and then I started, after I got down to 180, I started tracking my calories. I was maintaining that body fat at 3,700 calories. And I'm now eating 4,400 calories per day. My body fat has gone up about 7% since then. I currently train about uh, four times per week, doing a max of 10 total working sets per session. And I guess for my day job as well, I'm a, I'm a contractor. So I, I am very active all day, every day. And I guess my main question is why am I able to eat this much while putting on body fat and still, I never feel satiated. I eat 95% whole foods and I feel like I, I could easily eat 6,000 calories per day. 
I played around with macros, like high protein, uh, low protein, high fat, stuff like that. And it just doesn't really seem to help much. I was just wondering what, what could be causing this or what my issue is. Yeah. The hunger part causing or the increase in body fat percentage? Because you went from nine up to 16%. So well, hold on. You're, you're what? You're 6'3", 200. Well, how much you weigh right now? 205. 205. Right? Yeah. 205, 16% body fat's good. You're 21. You lift weights four days a week <laughs> and you work construction. Yeah. Yeah, bro, you're a moose. Yeah, you're. Well, yeah, I don't know what you want me to do for this. <laughs> a young stud, dude. What are you going to do? I just, my main question is like, I just, I Wait. feel like I could constantly eat. Like, I'm always hungry. Yeah, like, yeah. no matter how much I eat, I'm yeah. just, yeah. I'm just always hungry. Hey, listen, wait 20 yeah. years and then you'll get fat on the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, hey, listen, you've got a great metabolism. Your testosterone's probably really mm. in a good place. Yeah. Do you feel strong in the gym? Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, you're doing well, bro. Yeah. I, the best, I mean, look, if you want to crush your appetite or bring it down, the best thing you could do, two things. One, work on the discipline of dealing with cravings. Okay, so that's a, that's an important one to deal with. Maybe not now, but maybe later. That'll that'll come in handy because it seems like right now you can burn off almost everything you eat. But just kind of sit with the feeling. Yeah. Sit with the feeling. Have you ever and, done a 24-hour fast? There you go. Have you ever fasted before? Yeah, I guess my question uh, was about, that was about two months ago. I did intermittent fast, like at the beginning of the year for about a month. And that has actually helped a little bit with it. I definitely can't eat as much in one serving. Like I could eat like 4,000 calories before in one serving of whole foods, but now it's definitely a lot better than what it was. But yeah. yeah. Mm. Let me get some, I want to get some clarity around like, what is it you want? Yeah. Like what are, are you what, concerned? What, yeah. Like what it, what is, what is like the ideal scenario for you? Obviously I'm sure you want to be strong and fit and ripped, but it's like, uh, are you wanting to be able to do that and not have to eat as much? Or are you wanting to keep, like what? What is your ideal goal? Because I'm, I'm not. I, don't <laughs> I guess basically just just not go to bed hungry. Like I just want to feel satiated. I guess. So, so that's, we, that's pretty much okay, it. Okay, so we could also play with your macros a little bit. Like uh, I I I don't know how much you've manipulated getting more of your calories from like uh, from fats than getting it from carbohydrates. That tends to curb my appetite. Just recently, I brought up on the show. Uh, way back when we first started, the guys and I all took turns kind of running through the ketogenic diet and, and sharing our experience. I did that in the hu- the height of my bodybuilding career. And so I was eating five, 6,000 calories a day. And then I switched over to the ketogenic diet and it just was, it was so hard for me to hit those calories. It was so satiating. Then I realized when I went back to eating kind of balanced, I didn't have the cravings from, for carbohydrates anymore. Like, so I didn't need as much carbs as I needed to feel satiated anymore. And so it made it a lot easier uh, for me to like go to bed and not feel like I'm starving all the time and needed more. I was comfortable only eating 150, 200 grams of carbs where I was eating 600 grams of carbs before that. So have you kind of played with running more of a high fat diet for a little while and then lowering, doing the opposite and seeing how you feel? Yeah, I've definitely done that. I've done like as much as like 200, like 75 grams of protein per day or like even a hundred or close to 200 grams of fat per day and like lower carbs or I've done high carbs, you know, stuff like that. I've, and a lot of like fiber too. I've tried that, but I mean, and that's of- helped a little bit, but it really, I don't know. And then also to be a, be aware of, I mean, I don't know how clean your diet is. I know you're saying whole foods, but I also know you said you went from nine to 16% body fat. I, I doubt you did that just eating, you know, apples and chicken breasts. So pay attention to when you eat these foods that are designed to make you to eat more. And so if you're doing that, that makes a, a big difference than you loading up all the time on steak and rice and potatoes and stuff like that too. So have you connected those dots? Like, is it all the time that I feel this way? Or do I notice I do that when I have protein bars and shakes and eat, you know, eat out? And have you paid attention to that? Yeah, I, I, I pretty much like my main diet. I eat a lot of, a lot of chicken, ground beef, steak, potatoes, rice. I, I, that's pretty much what I eat all day, every day, honestly. Yeah. You're a moose. Mm. Listen, yeah, I know. here's what I want you to do. Yeah. Eat 250 grams of protein a day from whole natural foods Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting stronger, lifting weights. Here's the important part, okay? Get comfortable with not feeling satiated. This is actually going to carry over into the rest of your life as well because Mm -hmm. life is not about feeling satiated all the time. Uh, uh, Some hunger is necessary to push growth. And I don't just mean muscle growth. I mean personal growth as well. Now, I wouldn't tell this to somebody who wasn't eating 4,400 calories a day or whatever, and doing what you're doing. My conversation would be very different. But for a kid like you, I mean, you're on fire. You're crushing. 
Uh, I, there's plenty of food to go around, so you're not, you know, there's no, nobody starving because you're eating this much. I would say get comfortable with that feeling a little bit. Sit with it. Feel it. Don't try to always avoid it and get rid of it. And keep doing what you're doing, bro. 16% body fat, your height and weight at your age, you're, you're doing a phenomenal. Now, I will say this. It's going to change as you get older. I'm sure you've heard this before. You're 21. When I was 21 <laughs> oh, yeah. years old, I, I couldn't, I, I mean, I'd have to eat so much food to gain a pound on the scale. It was like, I thought something was wrong. Maybe there was a hole in my body. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't, it's not like that anymore. That's for sure. So it will change, but I'll say eating as much as you are. If you feel good, you got good libido, good sleep, strength in the gym is going up. You feel amazing. The only thing is you're just not feeling satiated. I'd say mm -hmm. just eat high protein and then get comfortable with that feeling. What program are you running? Uh, uh, I, I kind of have my own, my own prep program that I follow, I guess. Cause uh, there might be this. I do. It's, uh, I just actually, I just started, I just started doing like a full body. Otherwise I did more of like a, like a split, I guess. Okay. How many days a week are you training right now? He said four, four. Yeah, maybe reduce the. I mean, you're already Four, a super. But I, I just switched. I just switched over to three. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would move you to like a maps anabolic type of protocol, and just see. I mean, there is the possibility too that with all the activity, all the moving you're doing, and if you were training intensely for five, six yeah. days a week, that your body is just trying to recover and you're not getting enough calories to do what's so. Your, what, what do your lifts look like? What's your, what does your bench, deadlift, and squat look like? Just out of curiosity. Strength wise, you mean? Yeah, strength. Uh, I haven't really maxed. Up. I really haven't maxed out in like a year, but I, I benched 275 a year ago and I squatted 415 and I don't really deadlift a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to hang up. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing good, bro. Yeah, you just, yeah. you're just going to have to deal a little bit. It. You're going to have to deal a little bit with that feeling of, uh, of, of like your body's trying to grow and build. I know you don't want to gain body fat, which is totally fine. Yeah. So this is more of a like, okay, you got to deal with the feeling a little bit. But you're you're crushing, and you're so far away from your potential. You, you got another ten years of muscle building oh, yeah. ahead of you. So you're this will be where I was at that. This age. will be exciting. This will be exciting to see. And, and and listen, here's the thing: don't worry about. It's not like you're gonna have to eat more and more and more and more to build more muscle. Your body will just get better at building muscle with less calories. This is what ends up happening. Doug, why don't you throw him Maps Anabolic so he has a, a actual pro and follow Maps Anabolic? Do the advanced version of it or the 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 yeah the three. I appreciate it. Version. Appreciate it, man. You got yeah, it. Yeah, you got it, man. Keep kicking ass. I'll try my best. Don't you worry. You All got right. it, man. Right. Thanks, Owen. How, how many listeners are mad right now? Well, something, <laughs> something doesn't add up for me. The The fact that he, he claims that he's hungry all the time, which is a, a, a yeah. clear indicator that he's probably got a fast metabolism like yeah. we all as, assumed. But yet he was able to go from 9% to 16% body fat and claims it's all through whole foods. So, so it's a surplus. But he's saying he's still hungry in a surplus. Uh, like that's a that's a major surplus. I mean, that if you went from nine to sixteen percent, you added seven percent body fat. How long? We didn't ask him how long. I mean, even if it was over a year, I mean, seven percent's a big jump, Sal. Yeah. yeah. And which means you're eating it in a massive surplus, and then claiming to have done that all in Whole Foods, and I, it sounds like a, like a. He says he maintains at thirty seven hundred. Is what it says right there. Yeah. And he had an idea of what his grams and stuff were. So it's like he was it's, tracking. Yeah, I don't know. Math isn't mathing. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's not adding up to. I mean, here's what I remember being a 21 year old and training a lot of 21 year olds is that. You think you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because you tracked one week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You tracked one. Yeah. You tracked one week or you you somewhat pay attention. Like, uh, those those are some huge fluctuations. That's a really interesting You're feedback. Not going out to they, eat out yeah, there's and some, there's, uh, like uh, there's some things that, about that. There's some things that aren't fully adding up to me. I mean, nonetheless, advice still stays pretty much the same. Exactly. And you yeah. and he is doing a good job. I mean, he's stronger than but probably all of us. But two hundred fifty grams of age. protein from Whole Foods and still being hungry that is tough. Yeah, that is tough. Yeah, that's. Like, and and then also to simultaneously put on I mean, that's five meals with fifty grams of protein yeah. each without counting carbs and fats. I mean, and, and yeah, and he said he switched over to more high protein, high fat, and he's tried that. I mean, I, for me, it, it would be like loading too, like later if, if it's a problem for him to sleep, you know, and that's something like you know loading, you know, the end of your day a little bit more calorie wise yeah. to kind of help with that. But 
Honestly, like he's just he's just a what an if, inferno. I don't know, right I'm convinced now. he just wanted to tell us how much better, <laughs> yeah. better he was. How, how awesome he is! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I don't know what to do. The yeah. bar doesn't hold yeah, any more yeah. weight. I'm super handsome and hella just strong. Like, something's wrong. He's I can like, eat no, whatever I want. You know, yeah, it's a big bro. problem. <laughs> My Instagram handle, by all the way, all the chicks love me. Yeah, what do I yeah. do? What if it is a parasite? What if he, <laughs> what if he did have? A, hey, what if he did have a parasite or something? I mean, I don't know why I'm so hungry. You know. The tapeworm yeah, in there. He's still getting strong and, you know, no, so that doesn't good. add up. He's doing good. Yeah. Our next caller is Alan from Utah. Alan, what's happening? What up, Alan? Hey, guys. Uh, honor to be on the show with you guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> just a uh, few things for you guys. Uh, a little bit of a backstory. Uh, about 10 months ago, since I posted my question, I was diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes, which is was a killer for me because I've got health anxiety, but uh, A1C was 15.5. Um, they said I maxed out the meter, which was insane. Um, 29 years old, I was 325 pounds. Um, and that's kind of how my health and fitness journey started. Uh, was in football for a while in high school, but took a lot of time off and got into drugs and alcohol, which was like the downfall to everything. But two years sober now and then I got the diagnosis and I was like, you know what, I'm going to either die or I'm going to change my life. So I found doc Dr. Jason Fung. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's a big fasting advocate. So I got on a peptide and I started fasting. I did seven day water fast at first and then was doing 42 hour fast in between two me eating uh, meals a day. So I dropped 80 pounds in four or five months. Um, but then I realized I was losing a heck of a lot of muscle with my body fat, right? So I've uh, been going to the gym now consistently for two and a half months, five days a week, but I'm um, not really getting stronger. Um, my bench press was 185. My deadlift, I did a max of 115. Um, but I just feel like I have body fat on my stomach and everywhere else. And I feel like I'm at a plateau at about 215. And I've been stuck there for quite some time. So I don't know if I have to go into a bulk to get the rest of that off, but I'm just scared because of my diabetes that I'm going to end up eating too much and lose control of my blood sugar. So okay, that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. You need to reverse out, reduce the volume of training, focus on getting strong, that's make it. sure you hit your protein intake. Those are the those are the key things right there. Done. Did you, okay, so you're on uh, terzepatide, right? The, uh, the peptide, I just read in your question, you're on that. The yeah, so it's, yeah, so I started the peptide at the beginning of my whole weight loss journey as, and used that with the fasting, which really helped. I mean, I was on 2.5 milligrams, and it goes up in 2.5 increments up until 15 milligrams, and I only got to 7.5. Um, and this today is actually, this week was the first time I've not taken it. So I was taking it for 10 months, and now I've stopped because I feel like it's hindering my progress because I'm not able to eat. 200 grams of protein a day on that you know it's tough how how uh um how is your type 2 diabetes now how's your blood sugar is it, is it a lot better so so i'll tell you guys this um with what i did in about three or four months i got my a1c down to 5.3 and i'm completely off of all my diabetic medicine um and to be honest with you guys that my doctor told me that they have never seen anyone with an A1C that high and we're able to get it down that low so quickly. Um, it was like a clinical record for my doctor's office. So Great I'm, job, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. I just yeah, put in a lot of work in that, but you know, now that I've done all the fasting, I felt like my metabolism now is shit. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, damn, man, I'm st I got the weight off. I don't have the muscle I want. You're you're, you're in a good my listen, metabolism is stuck. Here's why I like this is what you this is why you're going to do well. We can yeah, we can You sound very disciplined. You, you did some shit that was very hard, way harder yeah. than what we're about to say. So, you're very disciplined. So just follow what we're going to tell you right now. Hit your protein targets from whole natural foods. Eat that first uh in every meal, so prioritize it. And then follow a good strength training program, which will send you. We're going to send you MAPS Anabolic. Follow the three-day version. Hit the high protein, and you're going to be fine. The right. muscle building effects, as you build muscle through doing that, you're going to see better and better blood sugar control um, because muscle is an – it's a storage vessel for sugar. It's storage, it, it stores glycogen, and it's insulin right. sensitive. 
So just do that right there. Just follow MAPS right. Anabolic, hit the protein targets, eat it first, eat in the morning, high protein, make sure what your morning, your first meal is a nice high protein meal and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. And I also, I want to have Doug put you in our private forum too, so we can keep an eye on you. The, the one thing that I would be concerned about is you making any sort of drastic pivots. So just do exactly what Sal said. Get in the forum, and then I want you to check in with us at least once a month, okay? If not every two weeks or so. Check Got in it. check in with us. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know how it's going. Uh, don't make any drastic changes from what he said without first, like, you know, telling us how what's going on. Now, one, one thing I'll add is try to make fatty fish or fish a staple in your diet just because of the anti-inflammatory effects of the fatty acids. So sardines are great for that. Good quality salmon is good for that. Um, so try to throw that in once a yeah. day if you can or four days a week just for the anti-inflammatory effects. There seems to be a connection between that and improving people's you know, A1C and improving people's uh, blood glucose or insulin sensitivity. So that's the only other thing I'd add. But if you just did that right, and as you start to get stronger, you're going to get a better response uh, with all of your, your blood measurements. And do you guys think that I should be scared of carbohydrates as a, you know, even though I'm such a controlled diabetic, I know it, it could be beneficial to my workouts, but would there be an optimal time Here's to what, maybe digest yeah, those carbohydrates around the workout. Yeah. as Here, a type around, two? Yeah, around the workouts. But okay, so I'll give you a couple pieces of advice that'll help with that. When you eat your meals, eat the protein first, eat the vegetables second, and then eat the carbohydrates third. So that'll help with potentially overeating carbohydrates. The second thing is if you do a five to 10 Got minute it. walk post eating, that makes a significant difference in how much glucose your muscles and your body sucks up. So right after you eat, just go for like a five or 10 minute walk makes a big, makes a pretty big difference. And then the third thing I'll say is uh, the, the larger carbohydrate meals, you could do one, you know, two hours before you work out and then your post-workout meal. Um, and that, that should also help. But other than that, I think you'll be I think you'll be totally fine. I don't think you should fear carbs if you follow that order. Sweet. Thanks, guys. And uh, I really appreciate that. You got it, man. And congratulations yeah. on being sober, bro. Um, yeah. and I will say Yeah, two years sober, and I do appreciate you guys. And you guys have brought up like and spoke about other things besides health and fitness and the sobriety aspect, and also you guys is like personal experiences with marijuana, which is like the only thing that I medical cannabis user and you guys have like really opened my eyes and like being able to focus on, you know, being able to take a break and healthy breaks and, and learning how to just focus on a balance of everything. And you guys really help instill that in me because I don't got a lot of like um, support in my life. So to have you guys to fall back on every day, I'll tell you my wife, she complains every time she comes out in the morning and she hears like all oh, you and your boys again this morning. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's every morning. <laughs> so funny. yeah, it's been, it's been nice to have you guys. And I, with my health anxiety the last week or two, I haven't been going to the gym. So like the opportunity to speak to you guys has now gotten me a little bit more motivated to get this started. So it's kind of been a blessing. I really believe in Jesus. And I think that this has been like, really ordained for me and it felt like the right time for me. So thanks guys. That's awesome. That's man. awesome. I appreciate hearing you, that. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Looking forward to seeing you in the forum. Make sure you say what's up and you uh, keep us uh, posted on how it's going. All right, Alan. Yeah. All right, yeah. Bro. I'm re really excited to be involved with you guys. Have a good day. All Thank right, you. Man. Yeah, man. Well, that's a awesome. tremendous success story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous success story. That's cool. I man. mean, to go from, that scare and, you know, using drugs um, to where he's at Complete now. Complete 180, man. And, awesome. he, you know, he's still, uh, look, you know, for people listening right now, like, he, he stopped the drugs, he lost the weight. There's still some demons he's dealing with, and that's yeah. why it's a challenge for people because they get rid of the ways that they used, used uh, to cope. Yeah. And so there's still some demons to deal with, but he's going about it the right way. This is such a phenomenal success story. I'm excited to see how, how yeah, it works. No, yeah, no, especially with the – discipline that he has if we get him on the right track with like the protein That's and it, strength right. and like I, hopefully he's going to see a dramatic difference this coming year look are you a hard gainer do you find it difficult to pack on muscle we have a hard gainer guide it's totally free you can find it at mindpumpfree.com you can also find us on instagram justin is at mindpumpjustin i'm at mindpumpdestefano and adam is at mindpumpadam 